They'll be so busy pointing fingers, Bible thumping, trolling comments, and making YouTube videos judging one another that they won't even realize they're being beautifully blinded by their P R I D E. It's uh, not a mentally stable person. No. Wow. <laughs> Viewers are encouraged to read the Bible for further context and understanding of the Easter story. Because you're not going to get it here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> are they in hell again? No, but we are. <laughs> Down. I don't know why she was there. I don't know either. I don't understand what's happening. Me neither. Uh, 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 did they not check this beforehand? I did, I did, I did. Remember, God gave this play to Michael Todd. So don't blame Michael Todd, blame God. So if they would have just told the actual story from the Bible, the story of Jesus rising from the dead after he died on the cross to pay for our sins. See, yes. I just explained it. It wasn't that hard. Right. Didn't they take two hours. <laughs> okay, he's talking about himself again. Hi everybody, welcome to Hit, Hit the, the Bar. Bar. I'm Steve Kozar. I'm Paulette Kozar. And we got our lovely two dogs, Ginger and Kiko. And we've got their treats, which are... Nobody cares. Cucumbers. You and your dogs. All you talk about is eating and <laughs> dogs. We do have chocolates a tiny bit over here for us. So welcome to Hit the Bar. This Hi. Is the, this is the show where we do sermon reviews and we talk about what's being said. And when we want to stop it, we hit the space bar. Hence the clever and witty name... It does not involve alcoholic beverages. You ain't gonna string me up for just a little drinking, that ain't right. Don't be silly. This is a jump rope, Will. Oh, what is it? Jump rope? Nope. It's a sobriety test. Now, here, hold this end and I'll show you. Oh, do I have to, Andy? It looks like. Either that or you tell us where you've been getting all that moonshine. Just the Although... space bar. Well, then you'll have to jump. It's just that simple. Oh, all right. oh. Oh, this is... you help turn. Okay. All right, watch careful, Otis. Tonight would be a good night for that, <laughs> if there ever was one. Now get over there. Oh. Come on, turn, Ant. <laughs> um. Yeah. Slow it down and let me in, or I'll go out and get some jerk. Now come down! We're going to be doing a little bit different take, I think. Uh, Hope this, so. This whole Michael Todd Easter thing has blown so huge. It's it's almost like I don't, I didn't really want to do anything because everybody and his brother I think YouTube just doubled in size in the last three weeks since he <laughs> came out with his ridiculous that's something Easter production yeah his Easter play yeah we watched the whole thing <laughs> so we watched the whole thing we talked about doing it on the whole thing we should have done this when we watched it because it's not as fresh in my head right now and we're way behind sorry about that we've been it's busy. him it's all him he's behind in everything i just go upstairs to my office and i put my headset on and i go to work and then i leave my office and i come downstairs and i i get to this you see what i gotta put up with you guys <laughs> it's true i've been working on other projects in fact yeah. you know what here let's do this oh let's boy. do he said let's just wing it tonight we're gonna it's wing like it when, when do we ever not wing it well we're gonna wing it more than we normally wing it we're gonna really wing it till it's wung <laughs> okay and the, and the difficulty is you just never know when something is wung <laughs> so or when to use that word i wanted to give if people a, a sneak preview is it a word? put it in the comments this is what it looks like for one of my videos yeah this was going to be a, a fairly simple and <laughs> quick video that he I, said oh, i'll have it up i'll huh. i'll be done by today and that was how many that was many days ago yeah there it goes this is only so far uh, 40 minutes. Oh boy. So there's a lot of piecing together. I'll give you a sneak preview. Whoopsie. Heal the sick. 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 Cleanse the lepers. Cleanse the lepers. Cleanse the lepers. Cleanse the leper. Cure those with leprosy. Cleanse the lepers. Cleanse the lepers. So raise the dead. Raise the dead. Raise the dead. <laughs> raise the dead. Ra That's my favorite part. So hopefully that'll be up soon. <laughs> it might it might actually be up when you uh, uh, see it or hit the bar video because I don't know which one I'll get posted first. We'll see. Um, so anyway, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see how far we can get through part of Michael Todd's Easter. <coughs> yeah, that's how I feel about it too. I tell you, my throat all of a sudden, as I was about to say the word. What, Michael Todd? 
or Michael Todd Easter sermon. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a oxymoron, actually. So, <clears throat> Easter sermon. At, at first, he didn't put up the entire video at all, and then somebody kind of leaked it. Did it, it on, their, yeah, on their, their iPhone. And so that's what we're going to use. Phone. We don't know if it's an iPhone. He, um, he's, he, it's really weird. So, I was just going to make a point, and I totally forgot what it was. Oh, well, that's what it was. Um, the play itself is really stupid. I mean, right. to, to be nice, it's just really stupid. It's and very it goes poor. It, it goes way beyond what's appropriate for any kind of a church service. Right. And it, it totally... Explain appropriate. Well, nobody really even knows anymore. This is, <laughs> this is the problem with modern evangelicalism. It's a... Uh, in fact, I was just... This is another thing. I'm, I'm, uh, me and Dan Long are working on a book. We've talked about it for the last two years, I think, and we're actually in the middle of researching it. So we're doing a lot of reading. There's something called the um, quad, quad, quadlateral. People are trying to define what evangelicalism is. And I was just reading a quote today, and I already forgot who it was from. Oh, I know who it's from. Uh-oh, I got him on a bunny trail. Sorry, yeah, this guys. Is, this is another book I just got. Um, <clears throat> you know, the author of this book was a professor here in Madison. I was trying to find if he's still at the UW, because I would like to talk to him. Uh, but one of the components, I think it was him, if not, he's quoting somebody. One of the components of evangelicalism that they think should be included as universally uh, part of what we now call evangelicalism is this non-denominationalism. So it's a denomination of not being denominations. And the downside to that is, what do we believe? I don't know. What do we do in church? I don't know. What's inappropriate in church? I don't know. It's just a total free-for-all. Mm -hmm. And Michael Todd is at the very edge of the extreme of what... Of the free-for-all? Uh, yes. A group <laughs> of actual adults thought this was a good idea. <laughs> and they spent a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of effort. I mean, the A lot of showmanship. Of, a lot of showmanship. I mean, it's amazing how much work went into such... A, right. Uh, anyway... Sum it up. Okay. Bottom line. This is another... No, I'm going to a... I'm, <laughs> I'm going on a sidebar, baby. That's what I do here. <laughs> Bottom line, it goes up. Well, okay, I'm going I'm to just say how the <laughs> church should not be trying to compete with the world in terms of production values and entertainment. entertainment. Yeah. Uh, we can't compete with Disney. Right. We know we don't have the budget, and it's a total distraction. Yes. Hallelujah, I'm dead The New York uh, <laughs> yeah, Broadway. Broadway. I mean, church should be the place where it's different than the rest of the world. It shouldn't be almost the same as the rest of the world. And if you're saying that the church is something you should come to because, hey, it's almost the same as the theater. It's almost the same as a coffee shop. It's almost the same as the thing you're already familiar with. It's really embarrassing because it's like you're saying... We, we don't know what the church is, so what, what, what do you want? Oh, okay, we'll make the church like the thing that you like. And the church should be a place where the holiness of God is somehow presented in a tangible way. And that used to be a real concern up until more recently, the last couple hundred years. The idea that we had to somehow express that God is holy, and if we don't understand that God is holy, it really doesn't make any sense why Jesus died on the cross, because everything's fine. Why did Jesus die on the cross if everything's okay and God loves us and God created us so we could have a wonderful life? And when they started turning the Bible into uh, just a bunch of rules to make your life better, the atonement, Christ dying on the cross to pay for our sins, really didn't make any sense. And I think that's what we're going to try to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the play itself, we're not going to play the whole thing, not even close. We're going to get to the middle part where Michael Todd gives his little sermonette. Soliloquy. Soliloquy. He's he's supposed to be. Well, I remember that from junior high. <laughs> yeah, we're, we had to give our own soliloquy. You talking about in speech class? I thought it, no, it was drama class. Drama class. Drama class in middle school. We went to drama class in middle school. Actually, you weren't in my class. Anyway. It was junior high. That's right. We called it junior high back. Middle then. school. What is this? Bunch of punk what kids. What is this? The twenties. First century. Yeah, <laughs> Can you remember which century it was? <laughs> I was say 22. Oh, man. That was a great quip there. So you had just Thanks. gotten to the, the correct <laughs> century. I just wanted to make you look better. That's but all. you know what? We need to give a shout out to all of our campuses all over the world. Hey, we're so, so excited to have you here in the 21st century because we're going to be talking about Michael Chad and his wacky, what is it called? Ransom Easter oh, Sermon thing. Movie. Nuthouse. <laughs> I, I, 
I, I, I, I, I, I, I have to think that he was so proud of all that they did to make this gigantic production. They spent years working on this. See, and, and you see, he had said in one of his little... Well, I'm going to play that. I'll play it. What? The very... No, no, no. The beginning when he says, I wasn't going to do an Easter sermon because I didn't even know how to be a pastor. No. You're talking about that part? No. Oh, okay. No, I'm talking Continue. about... I won't interrupt anymore. <laughs> so we do. We interrupt each other. No, when he, after the first... I don't know, it was Friday night or Saturday night, whenever they first did the play. And he just was pumped. He was so mm. excited because he thought it was so good. And he said, you know, and we're not going to put this up, you know, on our channel at all because you have to come here. We want you all to come here. If you want to see how God showed up and how great this thing is, you're going to have to come here because we're not going to post it. And then somebody posted it from their phone. So what I found interesting is like, you know, Steve was saying, well, maybe that was just... A ploy, you know, or a, what would you call that? A promotional or... A publicity stunt. Right. I said, or he could think it was so good that he didn't want other people copying off of them. <laughs> which is what I think because he was so proud of it. And he, he stepped in the doo-doo so big time. He did. <laughs> I stepped in it. Anyway, which, so I thought that was very interesting because he was very, he, he was like so into oh, it. Oh, God has just done And a he miracle. was in his closet. He said, I'm in my closet at home right now and I just can't stop thinking about how great it was and how God That's showed right. up. And I forgot How about wonderful that everything was and oh my goodness. You know, and then a week later... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> bodies everywhere, and, and, then, and then he's and then he's saying how for the past two and a half weeks, Satan's been accusing him. Of I have that. Let me. How? Yeah. Let's. let's uh, it's like wow. What is this? Maybe it's. Maybe it's. Oh, I don't have it. Maybe it is. Maybe maybe you could stall a little bit longer. The Holy Spirit confronting him, saying, "You know, this was." Not a good idea. This was not honoring me. Repent. Instead, he's saying, honest. I'm going to be honest. Is it okay if I'm hot just for one second, real quick? The enemy. Why would a pastor say, Can I be honest? Ever. That's a really good point. I mean, maybe you could say it's just an expression. Right. But he's like, you know, he's trying to convince people that he's right. really being transparent, humble, honest. Right. And what what is that? Hot, humble. I don't know actually. That's his little acronym. I sorry. We've done sermon reviews on this man. I try to forget these. <laughs> <laughs> I try to wash I'm them. To, wash my brain. I'm referring to our video. Yeah, but I but yeah. we have to anyway. Yeah. Has been trying to convince me for two and a half weeks. Said the enemy, by the way. Yeah. To vacate my spot. So. He's he's saying that all the bad um, feedback he's gotten, and it's been bad. I mean, hundreds of right. thousands of right. videos. I wouldn't be surprised if there's over a million YouTube video views from anti-Michael Todd Easter sermon videos. So, But what he's saying is the enemy's been trying to convince him. To vacate his spot. <laughs> which is... Wait, there's more. Yeah, it gets so bad. And believe the lies of people who don't know me. The victim. Yes. The, the the lies of people who don't know him. We don't have to know you, Michael Todd. What what people are doing is they're evaluating the content right. of your production at your church that you are responsible for. Right. But As he's saying, head pastor. they don't know who I really am. Right. It doesn't matter who you really are. Exactly. We're talking about your content. That's right. Can I be honest, y'all? Can I change the Again. We? Honest again. I'm open and transparent. Again. I've had people tell me that I was a false prophet. That people tell me that I serve the devil. <laughs> Poor baby. That people tell me that I'm not fit to be a father. Oh. Not fit to be a father. I, who would say that? I don't. I don't know anybody who's talking about his ability to be a no. father. This is big time. Let me make everybody in my already cult-like audience right. feel sorry for me right. and get even more closely tied to me than they previously were. Right. If you don't know you're being manipulated by this, that's why we that's why we're so clear and so harsh about this stuff. Right. And and obviously a lot of people watching our show already are kind of on board with us. They watch understand. these. understand. But but for you who are just tuning in, that's why we make these videos. You, you might be kind of shocked. Why would anybody say that? Well, just stick with us. You'll see. It makes sense. I've had people who prophesied over me, rebuke me publicly and never text me. 
<laughs> it's in scripture. You got to text the person first. Yeah. Please text me. Okay. Rebuke me publicly, but never text me. Koi technical glitch hai, tab aap message karte hai. I can't pick up your call. Please text me. So what he's saying is you, yeah, you, have, to, you have to personally contact him before you go on to any kind of a platform to, to condemn the teaching of somebody. And this is a, a, I made a video about this. Nobody ever watches it because they don't watch videos if they're less than 20 minutes old, <laughs> which is one of my pet peeves about being a YouTuber. You know, you, and it's not, it's not our channel. It's, it's no. the whole world of the internet. Right. Whatever is brand new is only <clears throat> worth watching if it's brand new. Right. Um, uh, but it's, it's in Matthew 18, and it's about when you've been personally... Um, Offended? Uh, well, if, if somebody accuses Ascend. you of something... Oh, okay, yeah. Um, Matthew, Mark, kinda, Luke, John, come on. He's getting done with cucumbers. He's kind of sick of them. She's like, more, more. I don't think we have enough snacks for this. Well, I'm, <clears throat> I'll hold off on giving him any more. If your this is Matthew eighteen fifteen. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to you, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two or... Uh, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. This passage is actually about church discipline. And forgiveness. Yeah, and about um, what should be taking place within the, uh, the church with, with actual people in a relationship, in a physical church. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it starts with, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault. Makes sense. Hey, mm -hmm. I can't believe you did that to me. Right. And then he can say, oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Thanks for confronting me. Or you're crazy. Or he can say, I didn't do that. What makes you say that? And then you go, wow, this guy's got a real problem. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring two other friends and, you know, try to... In the church? Yeah, in the church to, right. try, to, to try to convince him that... Because this is a a, um, a local body of Christ that you right. go to. It's, it's the church in that aspect. So this guy puts on this giant production that he's super, super excited about. He's convinced that he's done the greatest thing since sliced bread. And then he's got people okay. publicly responding to yeah. his public display. Display. Right. <clears throat> and Public they're publicly rebuking him. Right. And he's saying, you got to text me first. I can't understand your voice. Please text me. Yeah. Oopsies. No. Nope. <laughs> now, if, if somebody made a video and saying, Michael Todd and I, you know, we're in a deal together and he gypped me out of the $100 he owes me. Well, then he could say that. He could right. say, you should have come to me first about that money. I forgot I owed you the, the money and I would have given it to you, but you needed to come to me first. Right. That's what this verse is supposed to be really relating to that sort of thing. So. Never call me. Never pull up. <laughs> Poor ministry needed help. We were there. Yeah. When stepping on me in this church could give them some views, they took the opportunity. So this is another thing. Wow. Yeah, anybody who, heard this part. who makes a video that rebukes false teachers is only doing it to get views. Right. Because that's all we know how to do. Right. We don't. It we, doesn't we mean don't have, anything else. We don't have a life. No. Not, not to mention the <laughs> fact that many of the people who are good at it are actually busy doing other things. They're pastors. Right. They're, they actually have jobs. They're like us. They're just doing it because they, they aren't professional YouTubers, although we're becoming that as our audience grows, which right. is wonderful. But I actually am a successful artist. Right. You have a full-time job. Right. So we didn't Besides say, Besides the dogs. Hey, we don't have anything going on in our lives. <laughs> right. Let's start making YouTube videos. Yeah. But that's what this guy and everybody like him accuses YouTubers of. Now, are there people out there like that? I yeah. don't know. Probably. Probably. And right. they're the ones that don't get very many views because right. they're not good at it. Right. And they're not sincere. And eventually, I think people can maybe see into that. But, right. But still, this is... This is him making excuses and painting yeah. his enemies as bad as he possibly right. can paint them. To gain three more followers. To gain three more followers. That's a veiled, a veiled insult. He's, yes. He's basically bragging about, because he has a ton of followers. He's yes. got millions of people watching him. So the people who are criticizing him are only getting a few more followers. So 
Actually, Michael Todd, did you, did you want me to do the numbers for you? Because I can use Social Blade and I can find out. It's a waste of my Ten. time. But I can I can find out that people who are criticizing you, Michael Todd, are getting thousands of new followers. Maybe tens of thousands of new followers in just the last few weeks. Here are the YouTube statistics for Transformation Church's YouTube channel going back to September of the year 2020. And if you look to the right side, you can see they've lost a lot of views and a lot of subscribers. So you're insulting them and you're only insulting them to make yourself feel better and to convince the people in your cult-like audience that you're a good guy when you're a manipulator. I can't be this real. Somebody's gonna cut this up too and make it say something that it didn't say. <laughs> Somebody's gonna <clears throat> cut this up too and make it say something it didn't say. This is our whole video, just, just what we're doing right now. Oh, this right is now. it. We don't have to go anywhere else. <laughs> This little spiel we got going on here. Todd White has done the same thing. He said, oh, people take a little bit and a little and piece And I never there. said that. It's like, okay, well, you obviously have not watched what we do. Because it's not okay for them to put something out there so that they can feel powerful. For me to bash this and slam somebody and write and take sound bites and mix them together to make them sound like something that I'm not. For them to willingly do that means that something has to be wrong. So that, so that being liked on YouTube and being liked for your messages of demeaning others would mean way less than being loved by you. God, do something. Please, God, reach them. Yeah. We, we unfortunately, well not, fortunately take the entire thing and we let you say it, and we hit the bar to stop to like bring bring awareness to what's happening and to criticize it. Absolutely, and you know what's interesting is he's criticizing people right now. <laughs> he didn't call us. He didn't call. He us didn't first. text us he either. Didn't, he didn't text us. <laughs> Please text me first. <laughs> Because we've done a couple of his, his programs. That's one of my favorite things on YouTube. He's done a couple. We've done a couple of his programs. Yeah, yeah. I thought. And he, he would, and, I, and now he's he's criticizing us on on his little show. <laughs> All just to get more followers. Yeah, three more. <laughs> three more followers. Right. <laughs> We're having okay. We're having too much fun. Yeah, I know. I was gonna say that. By the way, we we keep saying this, but when people say, "Why don't you do a more serious show?" Right. I wouldn't do this if it was just serious yeah. all the time because it's just too dark. He does do serious things, which is part of what you showed them in the beginning. Well, where he spends days yeah. and days and days. There's a little humor in there, but it's oh, very not it's, like this. It's very. Um, intense, serious research. I'm also doing a lot of work with Brandon Kimber on the yeah. American Gospel, so I'm watching hours and hours and hours right. and making clips that are very perfectly, you know, in place. Synchronized, with, with yep. what, what The points we're trying to make and stuff like that. So... Uh, Going back to just being lighthearted. Yeah. That's how we get through this. That's, that's And that's why we have a show that people right. like watching. If right. you don't want to laugh, that's fine. Don't watch our show. There's other ones that are a lot more that's, serious. That's the amazing thing. <laughs> they're watching the show and they're typing in there, I can't believe you're laughing. Like, I can't believe you're still watching this <laughs> and commenting about how you don't like it. I don't get that. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, he I, says that all the time. I kind of get it, but still. You know you say that all the yeah. time. I, I, I just want to let you know yeah. That we serve a God who is a keeper. Yeah. Woo. That scripture that says he will keep your mind in perfect peace. Uh, if you would stay your mind on him. He seems like he's having a little bit of an emo he emotional is, breakdown. This is not a mentally stable person. No. Wow. We have not watched this. Not so the whole thing. Well, you know what this is? This is a reactionary video this is a reaction for both video. of us. <laughs> By the way, when we started making Hit the Bars, I wanted her to be the reactor in a reaction video, and she didn't even know what it was. I'm like, okay. I didn't tell her that specific no. phrase. He says, I just want to watch, show I you said, something. I said, I'm going to show you something, and then we'll talk about it. So we were just kind of making it up, and it wasn't until many months later that I said, <laughs> you know, it's a reaction video. I was trying to show her somebody else's reaction video, and she's like, what's that? <laughs> Like, you know, it's one of those videos like we make. What are you talking about, a reaction video? We make those? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, um, you know what they do is they, it's like uh, somebody from one kind of, uh, like a younger generation watches yeah. a video of a music or they listen to music from, you know, right. somebody from 40 well, years ago. You showed ago. me that, yeah. yes. 
And after a while, yeah, you know that they've seen the thing or they've listened to it yeah. before. Like, like, oh yeah, you've never heard that Led Zeppelin song before. <laughs> Serious, you know. We're going to listen to a song called Stairway to Heaven. I never heard of it until now. <laughs> wow, that's really good. <laughs> that's, called, that's called getting views. Okay. That scripture that says he will keep your mind in perfect peace. Uh, if you would stay your mind on him. That's really scary. If I wanted to make a case that he was actually taking drugs. Right, there it would be. Yeah, I mean, this is what. We don't know. You can't say that he is. No, but no. But it, it could be this just is he's, weird. he's giving himself an adre- adrenaline rush because he's got the crowd cheering for him. Yeah. And he's defending himself. Yeah. He's getting all this. Worked up. He's got all worked up because. A uh, fight or flight. Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Fight he, or flight. He has. It, it, I can only imagine because I've had people say mean things to me. We have a tiny audience compared to him. Right. And I've had people say really mean things. Right. And, and harshly and, and, you know, not. As a matter of fact, we're going to have a. A certain award that we've been talking about. Yeah, we've about. been talking about a lot of stuff. But I like that. And award I know what thing. that feeling is like, yeah. and it and it is intense. And he's had it a hundred times more than I'm sure I've ever felt sure. it. And I think what that could be this. Or it it could be something else. Adderall. Yeah. Yeah, something like Adderall. It's like he's on uppers right now. And I think a lot of guys do this. And I, I and I don't say this like, um, you know, it's just way out in left field. There are symptoms of people and, and i've actually i've made videos where you see that in the pastor and i didn't say anything and i've mm-hmm. seen people commenting in the comments over and over again oh yeah that looks like this such yeah. and such so we're just speculating honestly i hope he's not right but he's it's strange he's in a very tough place yeah and he's reacting in a way that's weird however you want to try to figure it out enemies tried to rob me of sleep But then I started to look at the ministry of Jesus. Oh my. Because I had to go. So, what's he going to do? He's going to compare himself to Jesus. Yes. And, and his ministry. And to everyone Jesus who doesn't ministry. like what he does is right. a Pharisee. And, and is against Jesus. Yeah. To my example, I said, I'm not trying to prove none to nobody. God, you the one gave me ransom. I didn't want ransom. I'm not pr- trying to prove anything to anybody. God, you gave me ransom. That's the name of the show that they yeah. put on. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's talking about the play. Yeah, the play. Not literal ransom. Oh, no, he's like, you gave it to me? I didn't want to do it. I Echo. didn't want it, God, but you gave it to me. <laughs> okay, so... So it's your fault, God. One of the biggest complaints was that it was Amazing. blasphemous. Right. Which it was. Yeah, they had... Yeah. But that was the most blasphemous thing he ever said. To actually blame this terrible production... Yes, the blasphemous the, production on God. Just poor writing. Mm. On God. The creator of the universe could have, done, could have done much better writing than the people that did this show. And acting. Did that. I don't know anything demonic that got 629 people saved. I don't, I don't know. And how do you calculate wow. that? 600 and what are you saying? 29 people saved. Got saved. Well, this is, this is a really uh, interesting point, point. or, or a yeah. topic. If you want to justify anything in church. Anything. anything you know, we had uh, some stunt going on. Yeah. And, you know, it was stupid. I admit it was it was embarrassing. However, However, we got those people to raise their hands. We got a couple of guys to come to that meeting and raise their hand to ask Jesus in their hearts. So, so. we do it all over again yeah. just to have those two people. Yeah, or what does 629. That mean? And what does that mean? It's actually theologically incredibly shallow. It's a, it's a very veneer kind of a thing. It's, it's, a, it's at the very surface of... What should be a whole theological undergirding, but there's nothing there. There should be a, a foundation. And that's one thing that we've learned because we are in that generation of, you know, raising our hand and accepting Jesus into our hearts. And, you know, we're saved. I mean, we, we are. We're Christians. But we've also seen multiple multiple people, many people, family members that have done the same thing and because they weren't. And they didn't have that foundation that we know and yeah. we see is so important. You know, they're not followers of Christ. So we're not saying that never happens. We're not saying that when people, you know, claim Christ as their Savior. There's all sorts of weird ways yes, that people absolutely. are brought into the kingdom of God. In spite of all of our bad exactly. teaching, God still brings people in. But for somebody like this to claim that's what they did. Yeah, no matter what he does, it's okay because 629 people raised their hand at the but end of But what's still thing. ironic is that if... A soul were one. Really, 
who should get the glory? It should be God. It should be Michael Todd. Not because of this program, but because of God. God worked. God worked in spite of uh, yes. really bad <clears throat> messaging. Yes. <laughs> oh, he's so humble. But when I was looking plan. at the ministry of Jesus, oh boy. there were two things that elevated and spread the kingdom. It was miracles, and it was accusations and persecution. Those are the... What? It was miracles, and it was accusations. accusations. That's what spread the gospel. And persecutions. I mean, accusations and persecutions... Aren't really the same thing. No. But he's lump lumping them together. Right. So, yeah, it's true that people accused Jesus of things that were not true. Right. It's also true that the early church grew in spite of the persecutions, and a lot of people in the famous... And it actually made them spread out because of persecution. That's true as well. And so... The blood of the martyrs is the... Uh, what's the phrase? It's a really famous phrase, and I can't remember it it's like the, the fertilizer that grew the church but what i remember hearing and being taught is that because of the persecution it made them run from where they were living mm -hmm. so then that really enabled it. the gospel to be yeah. spread it also makes people's faith strong <clears throat> much stronger because yeah. you've got nothing else right right two things that that allowed the message to go he would come in and do miracles and and then people would be like, yo, Jerome, y'all know Jerome who couldn't see. He can see now. So he healed a, a man called Jerome and now he can see? I, wow, I, I missed that show. Do you notice he's got this emotional background music? This sad, yes, you yes. Know, like he's yes. doing everything within his power to manipulate people. I know. Y'all know Carla that didn't have a hand? She has a hand now. And When did that happen? <laughs> Who grew a hand at their church? No, he's talking about what happened in the Bible. He's using modern day people's names. Because and nobody's hand grew in the Bible. No, it was a shriveled hand. Yeah, right. yeah. and it got strong. I need a piece of candy. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> people would go telling the miracles, and then there was another group of people would be like, but he did it on the wrong day. I don't know if he got clearance to do that. And so it was the two dynamics that allowed the kingdom to be forcefully advanced. How does that work? I don't know. How, how, is, how is the kingdom forcefully advanced because people said nasty things? I really don't know. There's no point at all. Mm -mm. It's, now, this is a big thing. <clears throat> Assumptions are not the foundation of anything. <laughs> But assumptions or assertions are is the beginning of an argument. Um, I believe the moon is made out of cheese. That's that's an assertion. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, and, and uh, an assumption is kind of the same thing. It's like a starting point. You have to you have to back it up. You have to prove it. In Christian doctrine and any kind of a Christian teaching, you have to you you can make assumptions or assertions, but you have to back them up. Mm -hmm. He doesn't back it up. The emotion does it for him. Right. So, uh, anyway. I don't know, it was somewhere around Monday. Yeah? That I told God. Oh. Thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> for considering me and this church worthy. Wow. To walk in the same level <laughs> of miracles and adversity mm. that you do. Everybody wants the miracles. Nobody wants the backlash. Today, I just want to come. This is for my church. And let me be very clear before somebody cuts this up. For my church. Yeah. For the people who get their soul fed here. Hey, we're not cutting it up, Michael Todd, by the way. We're playing the whole thing. Yeah. It's, it's and if a, you have a problem with that, give us a call. Yeah. <laughs> Text Steve me. Has, Steve has his phone number on his website for his... Yeah, I'm uh, easy to get a hold of. Yeah. I want to say thank you for being a church that believes in the vision, rides with your pastor. So this is a... Uh, a rides with your pastor. This is a cult leader yeah. maintaining control of his cult. Yeah. I don't know how else to put it. 
he he is not explaining anything. No. He he's not even making excuses for the no stupid thing he did. He's he's undergirding and double downing yes. what he did, yeah. and he's saying that God's blessed him for that. God gave it to him, and God is now giving him more. And he and God, it's he and God against the world and against people like us. What he what he is not going <laughs> to say, I don't think, is I lost a lot of support since this oh, thing came out. Of course, he's not going to say that. He 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 might admit that at some point. But he'll only say that in order to create sympathy for himself. What he's really doing here is he's saying to all of his key followers, don't leave me. Right. Stick with me. You have no idea how important I am and how important you are. And this bad thing that happened, and I, I look ridiculous, it's actually not that at all. Right. It's, it's actually how great we are. It's how important we yeah. are. And we're the only ones now that are really, truly working directly with God and all those other... Because God told me. Because God told me. Right. That's the bottom line right. when, you, when you're dealing with a cult leader type. Yeah. It's always, I talk to God, me and God got this whole thing figured out. We're the special ones. God is using us. God is talking to me. Trust me. You, you can trust me. That's mm -hmm. the bottom line for everything. Just trust him. Mm -hmm. Able to see heaven come down to earth. I just want to say thank you. Now he's basking who's, in the adoration. Who is gonna, who's getting the glory? Oh. <laughs> he, he's not getting any glory at all as he sits on the stage and people cheer for him. <laughs> Camera pulls back. The crown. I told the team, I said, people are going to vote with their attendance. They're going to vote with their... I just told you. With their giving. They're going to vote true. with all of the things. They're going to unfollow their... Fortune teller! Yes. What, he, what he is not going to say, I don't think, is I lost a lot of support since this oh, thing came out. of course he's not going to say that. He, he, he might admit that at some point. But he'll only say that in order to create sympathy for himself. We're going to do all this other stuff. It's the only way we lose. Wow. I'm not that smart. I've just seen these things over, over and over again. for years. Manipulators manipulate. That's and all they know how to do. we've lived through some of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not as bad as this. No. Is if we stop obeying God. <laughs> <laughs> Success is not followers mentioned. I wish we could prove that we hadn't watched this before. <laughs> Because we just watched the first, I don't know, maybe half a minute or so. At least half, just half a minute. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Because we saw somebody else post it. We saw another guy do it. And he had, he did a great job for the little bit that we saw. Yeah. And then I found minute, that the whole thing seconds. was available by itself. So I just uh, uploaded Because I was the one who said, yeah, Instagram. how about this? Success is obedience. And if it's just four of us in here, we gonna rock this thing till the wheels fall off. Double downing. The fact that I'm standing up here, you're looking at him. It's it's gonna be more than four, Pastor Todd. I'm with you. I'm with you the whole way. <laughs> oh, the enemy tried to throw all the hell at me, but I'm telling you right. Oh, no, Michael Todd, you were throwing the hell at everybody else in your production. It there was, was hell terrible. all over. It was. It. it was hellish. It was very hellish. I mean, there was so much of it. Was... Idolized it and then made fun of it. Actually, it, the, it, the 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 people who were it was supposed to be kind of the funny, actors and actresses, was, oh. and they made a big joke of being in hell. Yeah, these silly little. But I mean, even just the 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 sheer number of minutes, the percentage of the production right. that was devoted to showing the viewpoint of Satan or somebody who was or supposed hell. to represent Satan or in hell or in hell, right? Yeah, it was really bad. It was. It was. So dumb. It was. It was. Um, if I skewed, it was more on the hell side. Mm -hmm. And then when you had the there isn't the one, that much in the when Bible you had the hell. person up on the cross, it happened to be a woman. So yeah. that was another problem. That was a real problem. It was so confusing. I didn't, yeah, I was like, what and is to say going that, on? To say that God gave him this, mm -hmm. there's no scripture on the ever in there. If you look at God's holy word, that says this is okay. Now, or it should be, or it should the gospel should be presented in this manner, or that God would be pleased with this. Let's, as an example, let's use get me uh, worked up. C.S. Lewis and the Chronicles of Narnia, okay, which was a series of children's books. Yep, and I, I read it multiple times. I loved it. Uh, I don't know about the movies. I think they changed a lot. I only watched the first two. I think. Yeah. But whatever the case. I, I'm sure that there are people saying, "Well, that's just like right. just like the Chronicles of Narnia." Well, the Chronicles of Narnia is not a church service. It's a series Cartoon of children's books. Cartoon or, or, or just a play. Yeah. 
And it didn't, it didn't. Uh, and our church would not in a million years have the Chronicles of Narnia no. being taught as doctrine. No. We use the Bible for doctrine. That's right. why we have the Bible. It's God's word. Right. So, in fact, you know what? Let me let me switch gears here for a second because... Take a break. Uh, actually, he's almost done. Let's just let him finish. Oopsies. Oopsies. Right now, we will stand and do what God has called us to do. If you like it, fine. If you don't, fine. But we okay, everybody. He gave you permission. Stop following this lunatic. Are we done now? Uh, no, we're just getting started. Hang on. But more, more than anything, I want you to. So this is now. Pastor Chad is talking. This is this is. No, it's not. This it's, is the it's, beginning. It's the beginning, yeah. Oh, okay. I'll get to that. <laughs> see Jesus, because if you see him, it changes everything. Ladies and gentlemen, all to think. So this is the very beginning. It, it's cut off because it's not the official thing. I don't know why he didn't officially release it. I think he was. I was get, I, I'm going to guess here. I'm just guessing. But he thought it was going to be so great that there was going to be a demand for it. And eventually he'd be able to somehow sell it. Sell it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, or something. Yeah, sell the script. Something. Sell the play. Sell the music. But even in the very beginning, the way he kind of sets the stage for this, he says, I want you to see Jesus. He says, I want you to see yourself, and then I want you to see Jesus. I'm like, well, you're not showing Jesus. You're showing this stupid play. Right. If you want people oh. to see Jesus. Remember? Yeah. Is that in the middle when he says, if you want to learn more about... That's in the beginning. Okay. Yeah, I want to, that's the part I wanted to show. <laughs> I want you to see yourself. Yeah. But more than anything, I want you to see Jesus. No, you don't. Because if you see him, it changes everything. Well, then why don't you show Ladies him? Ladies and gentlemen, all across the world, Transformation Nation, I present to you, Ransom. <laughs> that's just a little disclaimer. Right here you go. And they give, you know, a minute or so for everybody to read this. Why don't you read it out loud, dear? I'll read it for the people at home playing the, the home version of the game. <laughs> Ransom is the creative expression of the true story of the fall and redemption of man through Jesus Christ, as written in Scripture. Except that it's not the true story. It. It, no. If it's in Scripture, you would actually be using Scripture. Right. This is, this is so... I don't want to use the, the word problematic... But it's a good word right now, so I can't think of a better one. This is so problematic to say that it's a creative expression of the true story of the fallen redemption of man through Jesus Christ as written in Scripture. But it's not in Scripture. It's a bunch of make-believe stuff. So okay, this, let me, The you. ransom show itself. Yeah. Backstories and some <laughs> characters or dialogue have been added. Everything's been added. There's nothing in Scripture in the play. Not, not no, a thing. Nothing, no. It's all allegory, and it's not even allegory that, that kind of is like the categories are all mixed up. Yeah, and you can't see, oh, like like Aslan, this, Aslan is, is Jesus. It's obvious because yeah. of the traits and because of how he died. That's not what we see in this. There, there isn't a, a, a one to one right. sort of this represents this, this right. represents that. It's, it's not. all mixed up. It's all mixed up. Uh, however, all biblical and historical contexts along with any artistic imagination, are designed to support the truth and intention of the scriptures. Whoever wrote that sentence is probably the same person that wrote this terrible play. Because <laughs> this is somebody who doesn't know how to think or write clearly. I'm, I'm, I'm just yeah. saying it like it is. This, this is somebody disqualified, okay? I, I, I guess I'm probably insulting a little too much. Maybe they had good intentions, but they don't know what they're doing. This is, some, this is, this is a poorly constructed thought and an even more poorly constructed sentence. This production intends to portray a representation of the gospel that draws in the lost and reminds the found of the power, love, and grace of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Viewers are encouraged to read the Bible for further context and understanding of the Easter story. Because you're not going to get it here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I read that and I'm like, seriously? So if you want to really, this is Easter Sunday. At a church. So at, at a, a church, church. Church service. So if you want to know about the Easter uh, story, open your book and read it yourself. Because we got something else here for you. You're going to love. To draw in the lost. Yeah. Well, they're still lost if this uh, is all they got. Or you push people to get lost. Yeah. Because it's another gospel. It's another gospel. Galatians. Hello. It's a different gospel. It's then it's not a gospel. gospel at all. Right. Paul was not very you, fond of did, that. Did you say that right? So I can add that funny little thing. I haven't done that for a while. I know. The Galatians girl thing. It's Galatians. Yeah. Hello. So, <laughs> um, I mean, that 
there's so much wrong with that. Yeah. And and he's not the only guy that does this sort of right. thing. Right. And so we're not picking on him no. or this terrible play or the bad writing. It just happens to it be. It just happens to be <laughs> what we're looking at yeah. today. Yeah. And and you know what? Honestly, if this was a small place with just normal people who really yeah. didn't know what they were doing, who meant well, I would never make fun of them. No. I really wouldn't. But this is a guy who's very proud, who's very prominent and is growing like leaps and bounds, and is. He's a false teacher. And there's a lot of money going through. A ton through. of money. Yeah. Subsidiaries and things that They're are buying up real very estate. Very shady. Very, very shady. Very shady. And that's the other thing. It's like Another thing I want to point <sighs> out is that guys like this come, they get huge, and then it falls apart. And I'm pretty sure that this guy will be crashing and burning before too long. We've not seen Kenneth Copeland do that. <laughs> oh boy. That's true. Kenneth <laughs> Copeland's in a special category all by himself. Like Jesse Duplantis. Yeah. Well Jesus had a little gangster in him. All those oldies. But no, these young mega church guys, yeah. I, I don't, um, for those of you who don't know the backstory about uh, this channel, I was a, originally writing a blog and I was working with Chris Roseborough at Fighting for the Faith. He has a YouTube channel that I highly, highly recommend. But before it was a YouTube channel, it was a series of podcasts. And I listened to it a lot and I learned a ton and I started blogging and I started working with Chris when he started a website. And um, I was making a really good point there <laughs> and then i got on this tangent trying to explain why we how we what why what was the point i was just going to make it was about <clears throat> oh, Mega churches yes, crashing and burning it, yes and he he would cover you know these really big new church guys that had this yeah. growing audience and now they're gone i mean totally gone i don't know what they're doing because, like uh rob bell rob bell yeah yeah that's a good example it is a good example yeah um there's there's ones that were in the south and uh, Perry not Perry Stone Noble. But Perry Noble mm -hmm. he was huge he had one of the biggest churches in America he crashed and burned big time Stephen Furtick has not crashed and burned yet how about the guy uh, that talks about getting on the bus and they leave the dead yes, bodies behind yes. him yes Mark Driscoll Mark Driscoll's gone he crashed and he's not totally gone he started a new church in Phoenix which is amazing that people still listen to him and the guy who crashed and burned that was in New York oh. Carl Lentz. Now he works for this man. So he just That's got on true. board. That's true. He just now, yes. he, uh, about a month ago? A couple of months. Well, I think it was the end of last year, but it only came out publicly. Yeah. So he's, now he he's, a, he's one of the pastors on staff. He's on staff. At this church. Yeah. Totally disqualified to ever be a pastor, and yet he's on staff here doing who knows what. And there's so many uh, yeah. uh, layers of wrongness with all of that. Many, many layers of, of wrongness. wrongness. <laughs> So here's what I think we should do. Let's let's get to the very beginning, just so you kind of get a flavor for this, and let's just skim through it. Okay, we're gonna skim. We're gonna skim over the top, and we're gonna make fun of it because I just feel like it. That's okay. The treasure of the kingdom would be made available to the people, except for one special possession: the jewel of wisdom. The dragon, who once was a master of the minstrels, had... Okay, her voice goes from so high to so low, and she's got this accent that I'm not sure what it's supposed to be. Nice, nice voiceover there, whoever you were. Uh, this is the video uh, camera part that's filmed, and then they're obviously showing it on a big screen, and then live action people are going to come. You'll need to encourage yourselves to have chocolate <laughs> to just coax you and trick you into watching Unless this. Unless you have a problem with chocolate. Yeah. We don't want to encourage no. healthy you can, eating, unhealthy eating. You can have cucumbers. Cucumbers. Save her with the key. He trusted her greatly. Marvelous, marvelous job. Excellent job. <laughs> Oh, but jealousy and envy started to accrue in her heart, and her desires for the throne began. Put in the chat what accent that's supposed to be. <laughs> Steve's really bewildered. And, and it's kind of like British, but it's also kind of Jamaican. It's like a mixture of the two. Huh. To overtake her. Mine is the kingdom. The power, the glory, forever and ever, he finished my story, we're singing freedom. I'll get a copyright strike. Oh yeah, you better not do Can't this. Can't have any music. We the, wouldn't want to do that. The quality of the music and the singing was overall really good. Oh I mean, yeah, it was great a, a professional, right. Very professional. Oh, 
you'll die. Oh, you, you gotta be so insecure. He did all he could do, but you be more and more. Oh yeah, so this lady, I guess, is Satan. Yeah, because she was the worship leader. But not exactly Satan, but sort of Satan. Yeah, well, she was the worship leader, because that's what mm -hmm. Satan was, the worship yeah. leader. And she wanted to be better than God. She wanted to be worshipped. So let's see how much time they spend. <clears throat> on this whole You get to hear story. her story. Yeah. That's her, I forgot, yeah. Yeah. So that uh, starts about two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. Why do you want to be more? But you wanting to be more, why you got to be so insecure? I found it interesting that the angel who is supposed to represent sort of like a Satan figure, yeah. she wants more. Well, that's what the NAR is all about. All about more. More, God, more. And yeah, when you get that's more, all they say. You want more. And then when he gives you more, you'll want to ask for more so that you... Because you're supposed to, right? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Because God wants to give you more, right? But but you got to ask for it. Right. But when you get it, you'll, you won't have enough. Right, you have to have more. That's, that's what Satan wants in this play. Right. So, so four minutes. Does she start talking here? Or is it I all don't just music? remember. Okay, I think it's ending now. With much persuasion, the dragon was able to convince one third of the court to join in her plans <laughs> oh, oh, oh. to overtake oh, the kingdom. Up. So but when the king found out about such plans, they were plans. immediately <laughs> exiled to Heldra. Heldra! Hey. They go to Heldra. Heldra. I thought it was Heldra. Heldra. As time went on, the kingdom <laughs> remained a place of peace and love. One fair and beautiful subject had been chosen to be the princess of the people. <laughs> she walked and talked with the great king daily, for she represented all the people of his kingdom who... Okay, so this lady is supposed to represent all human beings. Kind, uh huh. Which is really confusing because there's other people in the story. Right. And that's supposed to be God? Yes. Or God the Father? It's supposed to be God. Yeah, it's God. And he's not a good God. He's really loved. It's weird. She yeah, he's not. to make a father. But what the princess did not know? Oh, you do, do, do. Do let me explain. Hey! Wow, they had a few seconds of God and the. Humanity. And now we've got hell again. We've got the hell trap. The nasty lady. And everything before she came along. I took care of the courtyard, the inside. You know what this reminds me of? <laughs> Do you know what I'm going to say? I, uh... Halloween. Okay, um, Christian girls, when they're like in their later teens and they've been good their whole lives, Halloween, they, they get to wear a costume and get to dress up. <laughs> And they and they want to dress up in a promiscuous costume. I, so when when have we seen that? I remember seeing it when I was in. It's probably when I was in college. Yeah, I, I didn't see that. I was thinking about maybe a play from our former, our former life in the charismatic world. Just how the plays would go on, and you'd have these overly, oh, overly dramatic, dramatic people who happen to now be in charge of the drama she, scene. What? <laughs> That's yeah. end of discussion, yeah. right? That's okay. what I was thinking. And outside of the palace. And of course the king's treasures. Not to mention she can barely hold a note. A note. Okay. So now we're gonna have another thing on the stage. Are they in hell again? <laughs> no, but we are. <laughs> okay, they're gonna be doing some dancing. And dancing and singing and I can't play this because I'll get it cut. Yeah. Okay, now we get to the play part. So I was really confused because I thought that that was the that was God's daughter. Right, I did too. But now they say no, she was like a daughter, but and she did, was in charge of the they, kingdom. Did they call her the princess? Yes, because he made her the princess. Well, that's just dumb. I mean, it's confusing. Uh, completely. Cause... Okay, so I'm not... Very beautifully filmed. The lighting, mm -hmm. they got that shallow depth of field in the lens. That's the, the key, music boys and girls. very pretty. Very pretty. Uh, pointless, but very pretty. <laughs> this whole thing is pointless. And we don't know why they're doing this. He's got the same hair as Stephen Furtick. You notice that? <laughs> 
Oh, Ooh. speaking of which. No, no, no. Don't tell them. But we got something real special yeah. for that. No, we got, we're working on it. But we're going to help Stephen Furtick because, you know, he um, he needed to monetize one of our videos last year because he wasn't, <laughs> apparently wasn't getting paid enough. That's so, right. And so, so we, we, we're going to comply. We're going to comply and we're going to be, we're going to be very obedient to mm -hmm. his wishes. Yes. So this is all um, very British. Yes. And then when they're on stage, yes. they're not British anymore. No. No. No, it's not only British, it's that one movie that... Yeah, it's... Um, I can't remember. Oh, stop it, stop it. Pretty stop. Women? No, no, no. Stop it. What I'm trying to think. Women? Quit talking about it. That's a Richard Gere movie yes. or something, isn't no, it? Yes, I don't know. <laughs> Little Women. No, it's oh. not that one either. No, stop it, stop one. it. You keep talking. <laughs> Princess Bride. <laughs> The one with that one actress and that other guy? He keeps talking and I can't think. I cannot think. Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice. See, he keeps... Gee, but poor him as certainly is not. Do you dance, Mr. Darcy? Not if I can help it. Shut for like two seconds and I Pride can think. <laughs> like I said, this is, this is like Pride and Prejudice. Without the story. <laughs> <laughs> or the... A lot of pride. A lot of pride. That's right. Okay. Wait a minute, now she's going back. Oh, that's right, she's going to make a she's deal. She's going to get tempted. She's going to get tempted. From somebody who we don't know, we actually. Don't understand, because I, you think it'd be that Satan figure. Woman, right. That's like... Now, do we have to watch this? Uh, it's this stone nobody can have. It's Beautiful, oh. Anthony. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, princess, I didn't mean to startle you. Oh, no, it's okay. I was just admiring the castle's beauty. Speaking of beauty... Her voice is lower what than is that? like it should be. This is the Jewel of Wisdom. Oh. It's one of the kingdom's most prized possessions. Did that wake you up? Jewel of Wisdom? I would think someone as beautiful as you has all the wisdom she needs. <laughs> Have you ever thought about just... Come on, baby! <laughs> ...taking it? No, I could never. It's well, forbidden. But wait a minute. Surely for all of us, but not for you. You're the princess of the people. I'm sure if you had it, you could help the king do even more good. He loves you. He won't be angry. Won't you just... It. Makes no sense. Yeah, it really doesn't make sense. This is painful. It's painful. So she takes it. Yeah, and there's and a big problem. And remember, she hey, wait a minute, they're gonna have she's Satan again. She's in hell now. She's in hell. I think that might be a famous song. It is. Okay. But so, they changed the words to it. Yeah. But I just I remember hearing it from a long time ago. We're gonna get a ago. copyright strike, so yeah. I can't play it. Which is I'm fine with. I want yeah. I want artists to get paid. I'm, yes. not, I'm not complaining. But but when the when the um king finds out, we got to go to that place. So she's having a great time because the princess fell. So yeah, we've gone right back to the bed. Now here he is. Say, he yeah. finds out. Now he's gonna throw a con. Soon the con news of the beloved princess's misdemeanor had spread throughout the kingdom. When word got back to go. the king of what the princess had done, he was devastated. Dad, Everyone dad. in the kingdom knew that the penalty Unstable, for such remember? a crime was death. Death. It was so, death. So the punishment for her crime is death. Right. And he's shaking his head. But because of his great love... <clears throat> but because of his great love for the princess Sorry. and all the people of his kingdom, the great king showed mercy and instead issued another decree. Even though it pained him to punish his people, he was a just king. So a consequence for this transgression was inevitable. So she steals the rock, the big rock of wisdom, and it's punishable by death. But he changes his mind. He changes the rules right. and says, I'm going to issue a decree. And what was the last thing? I don't know. I'm already lost. I am too. I mean, I was trying really hard to watch this go, and this is a parallel to this, but... Yeah, but it's not. It's not quite. You can see it's sort of, but not quite, and it that's not how you... We don't know what he issued yet. It pained him to punish his people. He was a just oh. king. Okay, so, so he's to... gonna he's gonna punish the people because he's a just king, even though she was the one yes, that took that's it. Right. And it pained him to punish his people. His people, but he is a just king. So he's gonna punish everybody for what she did. Right. Now, if you're trying to say that Adam and Eve sinned yeah. and that that uh, produced sin for all of 
human beings from that point on. Yeah. That that makes sense. That's that's the biblical story. Right. But there wasn't a whole bunch of other people on Earth at the same time. No. All right. Just kind of automatically got, got guilty burned. of the thing. Right. It, it was transmitted literally through the human race, through the, the very first people. Right. You know, literally they were all born from the first couple. Right. <clears throat> that's called... Um, Original sin, right? Which is a doctrine that just basically says that sin is something you're born with, right? Sin is not the you don't a, have to learn it. You make a mistake and now you're guilty of sin. Right. No, you're born with original sin. So this really confuses that a lot. Yeah. The consequence for this transgression was inevitable. So it pained him. This is also confusing. This is really confusing because what they're what they're really avoiding is the idea that God actually must punish sin and it's almost like he it's not like he goes oh i better punish sin even though i don't want to because i just love them so much they're so lovable but i gotta punish sin no he actually has to because it's almost like he wants to punish sin it's in it's in his nature to punish sin because of his extreme holiness does that make sense am i explaining uh -huh. that well uh -huh. um if you say god looked at human beings and loved them and oh they did that thing they weren't supposed to do oh no i gotta punish them oh well why doesn't he just forgive them right right that's what that's what you would do to me if, right. if i did something you would you would you would and forgive same here. me yes this is this is what we do to each other when we forgive each other yeah so they're making an equation to that sort of a forgiveness thing mm -hmm. you know oh we broke the rules but I still love him, mm -hmm. you know, but he's got to pay the price, but I'm going to have somebody else pay the price. But I, I just, I just love him. But I, and I, you know, it, it pains me to punish him. No, it doesn't pain God to punish sin. It doesn't pain him in the sense that he, he actually has to punish sin because he's so holy. So again, if you have no concept of God being so pure and so holy and so awesome and so powerful, the idea of us being guilty of anything is just diminished to the point where it's like, well, what is the point of Jesus dying on the cross? Right, that, a brutal death. So what this whole thing is about is a ransom theory <clears throat> of atonement. And now there is some connection between a, a ransom effect, but the real undergirding, the real foundation of the atonement is what's technically called the penal substitutionary atonement. The reason why Jesus died on the cross was to pay the penalty for our sins so that we wouldn't have to pay that penalty ourselves. Which is pretty much God incarnate doing something. God to... dies in our place. Yes. Because and he takes the punishment upon himself. That's right. And we deserved. Right. We deserve to die and go to hell. Hell is God's punishment to mankind. So what you're going to see here is a very word of faith sort of thing where what happens is Satan is really the one that's guilty. Mankind is guilty almost as a side issue. Mm -hmm, right. Satan is the one who's really bad, and he now is holding mankind captive. Ransom. And he has mm -hmm. to be ransomed. Mankind yeah. has to be let loose from this bondage that Satan has over him. Mm -hmm. And this is a word of faith teaching. And that's where Michael Todd and whoever wrote this terrible play is, is coming from. Here we go. Write this. Build a wall surrounding the castle so that the people no longer have access to the wealth in my treasury. There will only be one entrance and it will be guarded at all times. People will only be able to enter my castle if they bring their best sacrifice and if anyone and I mean anyone trespasses, they will be put to death. It gets worse. Right? Yeah, she's looking at me. Oh, is that the end? No. Then he... Now the people of the kingdom yeah. would have to work hard. What to happened earn... to that part where he's like, I can't believe she did that? I think it's coming. Okay. Everything they... So everybody's being punished. Remember he said... It pained him yeah. to do so? Yeah. Did that look like a man who it pained him? No, he was angry, mad. Right. He was totally angry. Now, there is a, a way that you can represent God's anger towards sin. Mm -hmm. But this is not making it clear. They broke right. one rule. Now, everybody's guilty for what the princess did. Mm -hmm. Very confusing. Needed. And the princess could no longer walk and talk with the king. The trust between them had been broken and left a void in the king's heart that all the people felt 
powerless to fill. There we go. It's coming. It left a void in the king's heart. That's not what. That's not what this is about. That's not the Easter story. No, it's not. This is this is so confusing because if the king had a void in his heart, and that was the problem, there's no need for atonement. There's no need for anybody to die on a sin uh, on the cross for sin. What the king could have said was, "I forgive you." You know what? We all make mistakes. So they're trying to take that version of forgiveness, and they're also trying to take the idea that somebody has to pay a price. But it just doesn't make sense. No. And here's here's what I'm, I'm going to uh, hopefully explain, and I hope this isn't too confusing or too long-winded. But what he's going to say is that you have a severed relationship with God. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. That's the whole problem. That's the reason Jesus came and died on the cross was so that your severed relationship could be put back together again. And why do you want to have that relationship together again? Because you'll feel better about everything and your life will go better and you'll be happy. Oh, and you'll go to heaven when you die too. They'll, they'll mention that. Yeah. But there is no mention of you are guilty before a holy God, just like everybody else, just like me, just like her, just like mm -hmm. our pastor, just like everybody who's ever lived. We're all guilty before a holy God because of our sin. Little sin, big sin, there's no difference. Sin is sin. Compared to God's holiness, we're all guilty. We all deserve his punishment. We all deserve hell. God will gladly send people to hell because that's what he, that's that's his system. That's his right. design. It wasn't an accident. Mm -hmm. It was something that Satan did. And now he's going, right. oh, I don't know what to do now. Right. I got to try to come up with a plan B here. Mm -hmm. That's kind of implied in this whole mm -hmm. production. Um, so when you understand that you are guilty before God, and then you say, wait a minute, God himself stepped in mm -hmm. and said, I will take that punishment upon myself. I will pay that price. Because I, I want you to be with me. So, so then the emphasis is now on what Christ did for us, right. not on our our intrinsic worth. Right. And that's what's so confusing. He's like, right. he's really sad because he loves people so much. Right. But you know, I got this whole thing where they broke that one rule I made. It's It's confusing. Their lives that were once filled with happiness, peace, and royal privilege were now reduced to that of peasants. Peasants. I just wish she was more dramatic with her reading. Oh, I hope it's not a song. Yeah, let's move it on. Now she's basically saying how sad she is. Oh, I can't believe it happened. Here, you know what we're going to do? What? Oh, there we go. I, I believed in the lie. I thought this was freedom. Now this is the price I pay. Sweet words deceived me. This is actually a fair representation. of Gave up my trust completely. Representation of what happened in the Garden of Eden. Lost, Lost all, all that, that I, had. I had. We did lose everything in the Garden. It took only one, it took one, only took one mistake. Where no, do where, I go? Where do I go? Where do I go? What do I do? I should have sped this up. When there's a wall between me and you. <clears throat> this is kind of like a love song. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I think I should go, but where do I hide? Doesn't make any sense. When everything I loved is there inside. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Look at these two. Because I built these walls. No, no, God built the walls. Right, right. Maybe she's implying that it's because of yeah, her, her choice. Musical interlude. Father, please, can you hear me? No. Used Le to walk with you freely. Used to walk and talk with you freely. Now it's all gone away. But, but this, this is, is the, the choice, choice I, I made. made. <laughs> Where do I go? <laughs> what do I do? And there's a wall between me and when you. When there's a wall between me and you. And it's an active wall. What if I do it like a sportscaster? I like that. Go ahead. I think I should go, <laughs> but where do I hide? Wait, it's not a sportscaster. That's like an early, like a 1930s radio voice. <laughs> when everything I loved is there inside. Okay. Because <clears throat> I built these walls. Because I built these walls. Because I built these Cause walls. Because I built these walls. Because I built these walls. Because I, I built, I these, built walls. these walls. Because I built these walls. Trying, trying to, to escape, escape, but I, I keep, keep sinking, sinking deeper. deeper. Lying in the bed that I have made. Oh, I should have sped this up. Yeah, what's up? Well, we're making this up as we go. We are. And if I go too fast, okay, we miss... Okay, she's, yeah. 
She's trying to escape, upset, but I keep sinking, sinking deeper, deeper, lying in the bed deeper, that I have I'm made. So sad. All right, Lord, I pray, would you just let, let me stay? stay? Okay, she's begging to stay. Uh, where, where else, else do I, I go? go? Wow. <laughs> what else would I do? Hey, she looks like Michael Todd in his apology. <laughs> but when there's a wall between me and between me and you. What's interesting here is that she's representing, I, I think there's an attempt here to represent what it's like when somebody's repentant before God. Yeah. And it's the wrong place to be demonstrating that because it's confusing. It's like, well, why doesn't God just be nice to her? Look, right. how, look how repentant she is. Right, right. The heart of man is not naturally repentant. Right. And that's also confusing because this is a, uh, a theological framework that really places a lot of emphasis on our choice and on our free will. Mm -hmm. And so if, if everything is revolving around our free will and what God really wants is for us to just make a choice with our free will to follow him, again, why did Jesus die on the cross? Right. But a more theologically sound and biblical way to look at things is what's um, that fancy word, remember what it is? Uh, God is the one who draws us. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, we took a break. The word I was trying to find is monergism. Yes. I was saying montanism. I knew that was wrong, but it was close because it had... You have to mon explain to me. Yeah, monergism is is just the theological word that is in all the Bible verses that talk about God drawing us. And we don't choose God. God chooses us. Even when it feels like or it even seems like we chose God, we should always give credit to God for our salvation. <gasps> oh! What was that? It was her just... Making a yipe sound. Oh, you want another piece of... Okay, cucumber. All right, all right. Okay, keep let's on. keep going. Yeah, she's starving. There's a wall. I'm going to go. And I'm going to hide. Okay. You're supposed to be reading this. You're supposed to be uh, I wish me. I could be there just by your side. You didn't tell me. I'm going to turn my phone off. I wish I could just be there by your side. I built these walls. But she didn't. I built these... Right. God built the wall. Right. I thought maybe you would have sped it up while we had this break. I was trying to do other stuff. <laughs> I built these walls. I, I lost, lost it, it all. all. Just like we're going to lose our audience with this video. Yeah, we making. really will. <laughs> I lost it all because I built these walls. Oh, blah, 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 blah. She's doing the same thing Michael Todd does. She's making you feel sorry for her. Because too long, for too long. For too long. long. Yeah, makes this makes me feel, feel like, like. Too long, too long, too long. long. Yeah, this whatever, makes me whatever, feel like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> this makes, I've been locked out of heaven. <laughs> for too long, for too long. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get somewhere. Okay, now we're gonna have the little place. Where's his, where's his anger? There it is. The king longed for a day when this would change, so he devised a plan. Hmm. If the king's only son, the great knight, married the princess of the people, then the royalty could once again be united with the people of the kingdom. He's going to marry the princess? Right. I don't remember that. Ugh. That is so messed up. They just bring him into the story halfway through. He and you never heard of him at all in the very beginning or what, anything. This is not a Christ-centered no. anything. Remember, this is the Easter service. A lot of filler. I wonder if they're going to have the devil again. How much better oh, stop it. Can he show? You How know this better? is going to take a long time. Oh, here, hang on. <clears throat> Please. Hold well on. Speed it up to at least one and a half. <clears throat> Goodbye. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to sing. How much better can he show his love for you? How much better can he show his love for you? Then say, I do, I do, I do. I do, I do, I do. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. Is this what? Oh, he's going to throw his fit Yeah, now? yeah, yeah. He's throwing his fit now. You gotta have it at the right speed. Uh, oopsies. <laughs> Oopsie daisies. Here we go. The chipmunks came You know what? In. I think I am going to speed this up just a little bit. And a little I, bit. But I'll preserve the pitch. Yeah. For this poor man. <laughs> For this moment. I can't even explain. You see, all of this 
Was no, that hey, no strings attached? Sorry. I you can't you can't understand him. No one he's that fast. This is professional filmmaking right here, people. This is how you do it. This is how you get the big numbers. Where did we go? The king is not happy. Here we go. Yeah. Access. I gave them complete and total access uh, to about me. utter. <laughs> the ability to roam in and out of the city. They took my rock. I even decreed to meet their every need. All of my wealth was theirs. Except the rock. Except All the rock. except one. See? One piece, mm. which was solely for me. Mm. My disobedience overwhelmed them in ways I can't even explain. You see, all of this was theirs. This hurt. No strings attached. You know, they use the, um, the amateur... <sighs> Theatrical Actor's Guide to Overacting. <laughs> they belong to the because guild. I trusted them to keep themselves intact. In fact, I believed that because the <laughs> I trusted them to keep themselves intact? Yes. What is that? <laughs> what is that? It's like, uh, it's like... I don't know what else to say. Your kid's in the backseat. <laughs> I, I swear, I'm going to pull this car over. I told you to shut up. I'll put you in the trunk. Relationship between my people and I that honor with me <laughs> and remain consistent. Here we go. But somehow they missed it. <laughs> they just heard it's again. It's like a thief yeah. in the night that came to rob you blind. Ooh. Did away with your stuff and think it all to be fine. Only to get back to his place of rest and be bombarded by what time. And now the consequences of his actions weigh heavy on his mind. This must be how she feels. Ah, uh, no. See, right there, the consequences of their action must weigh heavy on their mind. That's that must be how she feels. The whole issue that they're they're confusing is that we're rebellious against God. We're not saying, "Oh, I'm so sorry." Right. That's the whole problem. Right. The problem is that man is rebellious. Our natural state is to be opposed to God, to mm -hmm. fight against God. We're not saying, oh, I wish I could change. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> but even if you look in the context of this whole story, mm -hmm. he's blaming all the people for what the one girl did. Yeah. And say, they did this, they did that. No, she did this. Now, if she birthed them all and they right. all were born into sin, <laughs> right. then you could blame no. them all. But yeah. you can't. That's, a, that's just a huge flaw in the story. Huge. And oh, oh, how my heart cries, like innocent blood being spilt. The favor that was extended to my child because of the relationship that we built. You see, with her, we would walk and talk in the cool of the day. Uh, yeah. Not everyone pressed their way into the innermost parts of my heart. But that's where she stayed. So she knew what to and what not to do because we spoke. And she also knew who were and who were not my folks. Oh, so the minute my enemy turned her nose into my business, she should have known to leave her alone. But no, her emotions took control, and her love for me was outweighed by deception and pride. And now she has put herself in a position to die, being seduced by sweet nothing of lies, rather than to remain alive, obeying the truth of mine. And now she has made loving her complicated. So that's supposed to be God. That's supposed to be God. Yeah. That's, okay. that's crazy. Do we have to keep going? <laughs> this is our show, honey. This is what we do. And hope completely faded. Hope completely faded. All right. And she... Yeah? ...represents... Yeah? All y'all. All y'all. All y'all. <laughs> that's not British. Now all that is tainted. And as much as I hate it like 
This is in pleasure. We must remain completely separated. Now all around me will be guarded and gated. And if you step across this line without your best gift, you must get faded. Look, this is not what I wanted, but this is how you've made it. But oh, oh. Now you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the movie Beckett. Where Richard Harrison... I want to be king! No. Where Richard Harrison feels betrayed mm -hmm. by his best friend who he made Pope. Yeah, that Because makes now sense. the Pope, when he became Pope, he did it only because his friend Richard Harrison told him to do that. He actually got convicted of sin. The friend's name was Richard Harrison? No, I don't remember his... You're confusing the actors with the roles. <laughs> anyway. Richard Harrison is also the singer. <laughs> so, Someone left the cake out in the rain. Right, but this is the actor. It's the same guy. I know, I know. So when he finds out... That song made more sense than his play does. When he finds out that his friend Beckett chose God over him, this is how he acted. So I wonder if he watched and took note. That's a really good point. I made you help, and you betrayed me. I'll bet you they did. Got the fake British thing going on. But Richard Harrison, he knows how he knew how to do that British. He thing. did. See, I'm. I was referring to uh, Second City Television. Oh yeah. A, a spoof on that. <laughs> well, they beat for that too. Yeah. <laughs> Something in uh, Mel's rock, rock pile. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mr. Richard Harrison. Hey, who threw that brick? Are you okay, Mr. Harrison? I'm sorry. My it's agents just... are going to sue you, Mel! Well, that's about all the time we have on Mel's rock pile for this week, so until next week. Uh, Mr. Harrison, are you almost done? <laughs> yeah. But no, it, I want to be king. I want to be king of the popes. When I was a boy, a mere lad. A fairy appeared unto me and told me that I would be both Pope and King. Oh, which is why. <clears throat> which is why. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna work something out, yeah. I thought he already did. Because that. I know did. that a relationship right. with me uh, is something you cannot do without. He already did that with the. See, I know that a relationship with me is something you can't do without. That's not actually true. People I'm really go, glad you're following people this. People can go I'm through done. life without a relationship with God. They do it all the time, and, right. then, and then they die and they go to hell. Right. But he's really making the whole emphasis again. I'm I'm trying to make this super clear. If you've been taught this way and it's not quite made sense, it's because it doesn't make sense. If Christianity is all about you having your relationship made right again, and you're supposed to now feel really close to God, it's not a religion, it's a relationship. If you've heard that, and you're one of those people that in the back of your mind you've been saying to yourself, you know what, I don't honestly feel like God is my best friend like everybody else keeps talking about. Because that's what you're being taught. Oh, once you accept Jesus into your heart, now you, you're going to have a personal relationship with God. Which is a religion. Which is a... You could make that case very right. easily. Yeah, because a religion is just a system of beliefs about God. That's all There you is. go. Um, but if you don't feel close to God, and even though you, you're being told that that's what you acquired when you asked Jesus into your heart, when you became a Christian, whatever that meant to you, that's because this is a flawed and surfacey facade on the surface of what is supposed to be Christianity, but it's really, it's just bad teaching. It's just bad theology. So if people have turned you off to theology because they said, oh, that's just head knowledge, you know, that's not your heart. Those are, those are actually theological ideas that are just bad theological ideas. So you need to understand mm -hmm. what it really means to understand the Bible, to understand your faith, to understand what is the church about? What, what does it mean when Jesus died on the cross? These are right. really important things. And your heart, your heart isn't going to help you with right, that stuff. Right. And so we, we really have almost a complete foundation of mysticism where you ask Jesus into your heart and you have this personal relationship and you're supposed to get all the answers directly from inside your heart. And when you read the Bible, it only makes sense because of this thing that's inside your heart when in, in reality, God, the Holy Spirit speaks to us through his word. 
He wrote it. Through the through yes, men. and and you we learn about everything that we need to learn about that's related to God through His Word. So when a church says we're going to teach you about God, but we're not going to use God's Word, you know, if, you wanna, it, if you want to if you want to read about it, go ahead. Yeah, it, <laughs> because you're not going to have it here at the church. It's just so incredibly flawed. Yeah. So restoration is a need that will come from me, but through the sacrifice and work of my seed, my son. This. Yes, that's it. My only son. How, oh, but it's necessary. What's also confusing is that they're not making it clear that Jesus is the Son, but He's also God. The the Trinity as a concept is that. It's one God and three persons. This is the most fundamental thing that the Christian church developed in the first 300 years or so of the Christian church. And it's not because they made it up. It's because that's what the Bible teaches. You just try to put a word to it. We call it the Trinity. And so God didn't send his son and say, oh, you know, I'm... Have to do something. It's, it's not me doing it. It's my son doing it. it mm -hmm. there, there's a way you can say that's happening because it's true. But God is, is also a Trinity. So they're making it sound like God is over here completely. Um, and he's not actually suffering on the cross. It's only his son who's suffering on the cross. But again, Jesus was never, he never actually, lost being God. you'll never see anyone on the cross except a woman in here. Isn't there two people that go to the cross? No. We'll see. And anyone. I thought there was two times somebody goes up on the cross and comes back down. Uh, to come back down. We'll get back into right standing with me. Then life <laughs> is intended for my people will be redeemed. He went to the Catherine Kuhlman School of Overacting. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now, what I think is that people who actually do <sighs> understand something more of what the gospel message is, yeah. they're watching this, or if they're there in person, they're kind of adding all the missing parts themselves. And I know what this means. I know what it means, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I know what this. I know what they're trying to do. But if you're actually trying to draw in the lost, as yeah. they claim, people who don't know what the gospel message is, right. this is not helpful at all. This is actually very harmful. Right. It's, it's just confusing. It doesn't matter what you do. Can I go back, or is they just going to the know. same song again? Oh, we missed a song. Wow. I think it was the end of that same yeah. song, or the second half. Now, Meanwhile, the princess in her state of anger and resentment scoured the land surrounding Hervania to find the mysterious visitor who had deceived her in the garden and ruined oh. her life. Her search led her to a region what she just was outside either. the dark <laughs> land of Helgra, where she would soon find herself face to face with the dragon. Here we go. Is that the lady? Yeah. My question is, have you found yourself in this production yet? No. I don't understand what's happening. See, the princess of the people represents all of us. Oh, why, why don't you just... It doesn't... Why do you have to make it so confusing and then do this little thing in the middle where you explain what it means? Just... And then they're going to go back to the confusing thing again. I'll let him just take it over because I have no words. matter where you come from, how you were raised. This is what we were going to do originally. We were going to actually right. show this middle part. We don't know what we're doing. No. But we know what we're doing. Of course we do. Yeah. <laughs> How much money was in the bank? Every one of us were born into this life of sin. That's true. Yeah, this is this is really important because he's going to say some things here that get really close to the truth. Yes. And then he goes and jumps off the cliff and misses it completely. Right. And we, I wish we had the tape recorder on and I could remember exactly what I said when we watched this the first oh, time. Oh, I know. I hope I see it as clearly as I did the first time. With a bankrupt soul. See, nobody talks about that. I know everybody looks good today and everybody's... No, that's not true that nobody talks about it. I don't know what he's referring to. If he's talking about the outside world doesn't talk about it because they want to, you know, pretend they don't have sin, that, right. that's true. But he's kind of making it sound like he's the only guy in the world that's bringing up the issue of sin, which actually he doesn't do very much. Very much. No. And he's not even doing it well in this production at all. Trying to present their best, but the best is what God gave us in the beginning. He gave us a garden with a relationship with him. The highest... 
You know, if you would just read the Bible story, you wouldn't have to try to use all this allegorizing and then summarizing. You would just actually read the Bible. That's what a real church does. Form of life was having an uninterrupted relationship with him. See? Relationship. And then what happened? It's the same thing that happens to all of us. Let me not even talk about you. It's the same thing that happened to me. Somewhere deep down on the inside of me, I don't know where it came from, but there was sin that... What do you mean you don't know where it came from, Pastor Michael Todd? Again, that's original sin. That was my, watch this, nature. Oh, there you go. But he said Nobody he know where it came from. Maybe he said he just, doesn't know where yeah, it came from. He's just an emotional yeah, speaker who, right. who says things Words. because it sounds good, but it doesn't make sense if you actually think about it. Logically. Which, which his audience isn't probably or doing anyway, very much. I wish they would. Teach me how to lie. It just came naturally. There we go. And I'm telling on myself right now, but there's some things that are not like God that come natural to you. And if you would be honest in this place, those are the very things we try to put makeup over. We try to put money and success over. That's what you do. We try to make our lives look so grand on social media. That's but what, what he we're does. really covering up is the insecurity that separates us from God. And let me. Insecurity is not what separates us from God. Insecurity might be a result of our separation right. from God. But again, it's kind of like uh, you're a victim. Right. The, your your sin problem is making you insecure. Right. That's all it does. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, maybe he's going to go on. Let me, let me give it a name. It's I'll give three letters. Shake. It's sin. <clears throat> and I know in 2023, everybody tries to make sin okay. But even if it's okay with everybody around you, it's not okay with the one who created you. That's good. That's a good point. What I'm saying to you right now yeah. is our sin has created a wall. My sin has created a wall because God is holy. There we go. That's right. And that word is not some deep spiritual word. It's a word that means he said, I'm completely not like that. I'm complete. See, when he tries to be hip like that and use modern words and stuff, it doesn't help at all. Right. And he's insulting his audience by saying, I could use a real word that I would have to look up, you know, in the week of study that I'm supposed to be doing. But instead, I'm going to use my own language because you're not smart enough and neither am I to actually use real words that actually are helpful. Right. You know, again, this mm -hmm. thing about you got to be relevant. You can't right. use any kind of, you know, historically used Christian words to explain things or even Bible words. It's, right. It's, it's really an insult to everybody. Completely separate from that. So to be in right relationship with me, I can't mix with the thing that is not like me. So he says to every one of us. Did you get that last phrase? How I can't we, mingle with something that's not like me. We know that there will still be things on the inside of us that go against the nature of God. But how can I be with my kids? The whole you story of somewhere. Easter is out. I, I went the wrong direction. Yeah, you did. How can we get back in? Nope. Means he said, I'm completely not like that. There we Keep go. Keep it going. I'm completely separate from that. Mm -hmm. So to be in right relationship with me, I can't mix with the thing that is not like me. I'm not like that. I'm separate. And I can't mix with that. Because it's not like me. It's not like me. I mean, it's not like that's wrong. It's just, it's just <clears throat> too vague. And again, he's avoiding the issue of our sin doesn't just separate us from God, which it does. It causes us to suffer in eternal damnation in hell. Mm -hmm. That's that's what the Bible teaches. Right. And if you don't understand that, all you're saying is you don't have this close walk with God, this close relationship with God. There's a wall separating you from God, and you don't mm -hmm. have all the good things that you'll have on the other side of the wall when you're in the right relationship with God. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which is not the full picture at all. Right. So he says to every one of us, how can we get back in relationship? How can we know that there will still be things on the inside of us that go against the nature of God? But how can I be with my kids? The whole story of Easter is I want my kids back.
That is so confusing. Mm -hmm. That is really confusing. Here, I'm going to use the little thing so I can back it up better. <sighs> okay. I know you're losing steam here, honey. I am. I'm losing steam. Don't lose steam out there, people in our audience. All nine of you who are still watching. <laughs> I want to play this again. How can we get back in relationship? How can we know that there will still be things on the inside of us that go against the nature of God? But how can I be with my kids? The whole story of Easter is I want my kids back. So God is saying, how can we work on this thing together so that we can get our, you know, family relationship put back together? Mm -hmm. Wake up! <laughs> you are really... I know. I get up. I got up at like 5.30 this morning. Well, so did I. I was right no, there. No, you didn't. I woke you up. It was like 6. Use a half hour more. Okay. In a half an hour from now, I'll be losing steam. Yeah. Um, here's, what, here's what I want to make really clear. When God looks at us, he doesn't say, oh, I just love them, but you know. I the, want my kids back. I want my kids back. He says, no, I, I hate the sin that I see in, in all people. It offends God. And when we are Christians, we are now covered with the righteousness of Christ. We have what's the, the word that he refuses to use, the imputed righteousness. Mm -hmm. It's given to us as a totally a free gift. And when God looks at us, he doesn't see our sin anymore. He sees Christ instead. And that's the, the, the way that, that it explains it so that it's not about, even though you got sin, he still wants to have a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. Well, if he can still have a relationship with you, even though you still have the sin problem, hey, then let's just have it. But what we say is because Christ died on the cross for our sins, once we accept Christ's sacrifice, the atoning sacrifice for our sins... God doesn't see me anymore. He sees his son, Jesus. And so our, End of discussion. Our, our, our sin doesn't offend him anymore. Right. Because he doesn't see it. Right. It's been taken away. That's correct. In a legal sort of a way. Yes. And the Apostle Paul actually uses legal language. That's why I'm saying that. Yeah. And without the Apostle Paul, we really don't have a good understanding of the atonement in the New Testament because it just wasn't made clear. I have four children. Clear enough. Right. And there is nothing on this earth that I wouldn't do to be with them. So, okay, that's great. I, I believe he loves his kids like all dads usually love their kids. I know there's some bad dads, but for the most part, you know, that's intrinsic to all parents. You love your kids. So when they do something bad, you know, you, you, you figure out a way to, you know, overlook right. it and try to move on. Right. That's how he's he's making the whole thing sound like that's all it is. That like um, bringing God's kind of you're you're on equal footing with God. Yeah, as like a parent, the separation between our sin and God's holiness isn't that great. It's just like with us and our kids. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many obstacles, how many barriers, how many. Not because they're good. It's because they're mine. And every person under the sound of my voice, no matter how bad you've been, you're still his. But but you're not his. You're not his. Unless if, if, if you are. In, if you're in disbelief, right. if you're rejecting God, right. you're not his. Right. You're under God's wrath. Right. You're God's enemy. You're in great danger. But what he's saying is, you're not that bad. Right. God still loves you so much, you know. Because you're his child. Because you're his child. No, you're not his child until... Until you're a Christian. Right. And he even, forgets to talk about that. Right. And and <clears throat> I know this is a much deeper issue, but how you become a Christian is not just going to a church like this and going, I want to be a Christian and raising your hand. Um, it is just believing, but they don't know what to believe because he's not teaching right. correctly what to believe. Right. And historically, it's much more than just believing. It's actually being in an actual church. Right, right. It involves wanna, baptism. Right. It involves actually being taught correctly by a trained pastor. It isn't just going to a church where a guy gives a speech and you raise your hand. Right. And he wants a relationship with you. I know what religion has told you. Clean up. Stop doing that. Stop talking about that. But God is saying... That's, that's not true. Exactly. Now... Are some religions doing that? Yes. Yes. But he's making it sound like he's the only guy that's kind of figured this out. Or uh, that's the that's the nature of religion, is that it's about you got to clean up Do your act don't. first. Mm -hmm. 
And again, this is a this is one of those things that I think people with good intentions decades ago said it's not a relationship. I mean, it's not a religion. It's a relationship. <clears throat> religion is bad. Relationship is good. But again, religion is just a word that generally means a system of beliefs about God. It's not a system of beliefs where you do certain things in order to appease God so that he will then allow you to be part of his family or go to heaven. That's the, 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 the fake definition of religion that well-meaning evangelicals probably came up with at some point in the distant past. Okay. Hey, come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to help you. I know you're hurting. And I'll... So... <laughs> I know you're hurting is kind of, again, saying you're not that bad. Right. What you need to do if you're truly going to come to Christ is to say, I, I, it's not about me being hurting, although there's probably some hurting. That's, that's true of all right. people. And why are you hurting? Because you're a sinner and you do bad things. Right. And you're opposed to God and you've been disobeying God. So all of the bad things in your life, yeah, your you, sin. You, you do, you, you're going to grieve. You do have grief. You do have right. sadness. You do have pain. But on top of that, you got to see what's the core underlying issue. It's, right. it's not that somebody did something to you, like Satan did something to you. Yeah. It's that you did something against God, and He's not making that clear. No. On this Easter, I wanted to come, and I wanted to speak to the person who's not going to say much in this room. Who barely made it in here with enough hope to think that you wouldn't be judged. I want to talk to the person that's sitting at home who put on their clothes and said, I can't go out of this house because I don't want people to find out who I really am. Today, your heavenly father is saying, I want a relationship with you. See, for me, I did all the right things on the outside. But I was so backed up and jacked up on the inside. I was a liar. I was a... See, this doesn't actually make his point clear at all. Right. Because he's, And what is that point? Well, the point he was just making there is mm -hmm. that there are people saying, and I think this is a really good point. Yeah. And I want to give credit where credit is due. Any good pastor at any good Christian church should be saying, I want those people who feel like they're not good enough to know this is the place to go. Right. Because we aren't good enough. Right. Don't we'll wait until good you're good enough. enough. That's right. the wrong. And I even built our church's website, and I wrote some of the stuff there. And that's one of the things I said. If you're waiting to go to church right. till you've you know figured stuff out, mm -hmm. please don't do that. That's wrong. That's the wrong way to think about church. Church is the place to go to to say, hey, we're all in the same boat. So instead of just sticking with that point, he's now going to talk about how Himself. he was a hypocrite and how he was doing all these really really bad things when he was a Christian or a supposed Christian. Okay. Which is making the point that you got to clean up your act and be a real Christian. Okay. Manipulator, I was playing drums in church and addicted to pornography websites at night. And I know nobody's going to say amen, but there's something that the enemy has deceived you in as well. Maybe it's that if I climb this corporate ladder and have money, maybe I'll be worth something. Baby, you were worth something when God called your name. You were worth something. But you're not worth something. Again, you're guilty before a holy God. The only reason why you're worth something is because of what Jesus did. Yes, and he's not making that And this point. is Easter. Yeah. He said, I love you and you are mine. And it is good that you tell people that God loves people. In general, that's not, like, wrong. Right. It's just that he's not putting it in the right context at all. He's making right. it sound like everybody's good. Right. Yeah, you made some mistakes. You made some sins. He, he does use the word sin. But still, if God loves you so much, who cares if you sin? Right. Can't be that bad. He loves you. Maybe you've been searching for peace in substances or in people. And God's saying... I provided you with the Prince of Peace. And I even have to talk to the people who are coming to church all the time and doing all the right things. God does not require your performance anymore. Well, why, why do you have to tell that to people in church? If you're teaching the gospel every week, you wouldn't have to even make that so clear. But he doesn't. He's usually talking about how people got to get serious about God like all right. these people do. They talk la, 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 la. Right. Because you only get la, the gospel la, once. La, 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 la. Yeah. <laughs> He won't show your heart posture to be right. Okay, this is the part. Okay. If all of the works that you do are trying to make you better than somebody else, you don't even have his heart. He wants your heart posture to be right. 
Doesn't that sound like you got to get your heart right before mm-hmm. you before God will have this relationship with you? Mm-hmm. And I, I watched that part just a little uh, before we started, and I'm I don't want to misunderstand him. I'm going to back it up a little bit. He wants your your heart posture to be right. If all of the works that you do are trying to make you better than somebody else, you don't even have his heart. Well, nobody has his heart. <sighs> You're trying to still work your way into the grace of God. Today, God is saying, I want all my children to come home and get this ring in this robe and sit at my table and know that with all your mistakes, with all of your mess ups, with all of the things that you are planning to still do, even sitting here right now, God says, bring it to me. Your confusion, bring it to me. Your addiction, bring it. So now he's confusing our willful sin with our addictions and our bad habits or, you know, things right. that we don't have control over. Right. So he's he's merging two completely separate categories. Yes. And he's confusing mm-hmm. things again. Here right back now, it up. God says, bring it to me. Bring what to him? Your confusion right now. God said, still do, even sit, planning to still do, even sitting. So he's talking about sin right there. He's talking about really bad intentions. And that intention of sin. With all of the things that you are planning to still do, even sitting here right now, God says, bring it to me. But God doesn't say, bring your bad stuff to me. He says, repent of your bad stuff. Right. He says, ask for mercy. Yeah. To say, I, I, I know I do these bad things and I'm so right. sorry, God. Please have mercy on me. Mm-hmm. He's confusing things again. Your confusion, bring it to me. Yeah, I'm more confused every time you talk, you knucklehead. <laughs> your addiction, bring it to me. Yeah, bring your addiction to your God. Your religion, but... bring it. What, what, what does that mean, bring your religion to God? I don't know. I, the way these men throw, throw that word around, yeah. as if everybody knows what they're talking about, it's basically anything other than him. Mm-hmm. That's, I think, what it really gets down to. To me. Your frustrations, bring it to me. And if you don't understand the gospel <clears throat> message and you think that you can do these things and God's going to somehow fix your frustrations yeah. and your confusions, ain't going to happen. You're going to be more frustrated and more confused. because See, I don't want that God. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's why he's doing such That's harm. That's why it's exactly... And before you bring it to me, I'm going to make a way for you to know that I love you. The Bible says while we were yet sinners. This is, this is an actual while verse. While we weren't even thinking about God. Mm-hmm. He said Christ died. That's right. Amen. Easter is about the payment for the sin that I made. No, it Jesus it was died Jesus. to death. We should have all died because of the life we currently live. That's right. You didn't even hear what I just said. That's the only thing that I heard when you said that makes sense. Yes. Everything that I do, the Bible says that he took it upon his body. Everything I do. No, every every, every sin that I do. Wound. Yeah. Every rip. Every tear. It's not for what he did. The Bible said he lived a perfect life, but he was the sacrificial lamb. Because God says, you know what? For them to be in right relationship with me, somebody's going to have to pay for this. Why? He doesn't make that clear. Right. Why does somebody have to pay for this? Why doesn't God just say, hey, don't worry about it? And our big brother Jesus said, I'll pay for it. I'll go and take the punishment that they should have. This makes more sense with that sad music playing. Yeah. And our elder brother, the second Adam. See, the first Adam messed it up. But the second Adam came to correct it all. And when he got up on that tree, it wasn't Jesus up there by himself. It was me. It was you. And today... God is saying, would you please accept the payment that's already been paid? (laughs) Would you please accept? Like God's God's begging heartbroken. Just like that king. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the result of having a non-monergistic sort of theology. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a Calvinist thing. A lot of people think, oh, that's a Calvinist thing. And Calvinists are are really on the money with 
the idea of monergism. Uh, we're Lutherans. It's very, very similar the way we view it. Basically, salvation is a total gift of God. And he does make that point, but everything else is geared towards making you raise your hand and make a choice. It's already been paid. As this production goes on, I no longer want you to see just actors and lights and smoke. I want you to see yourself. And I want you to see that the great lengths that your heavenly father went through to create a way for you to have a relationship with him. My prayer is that everybody that's watching this under the sound of my voice, that your heart would be arrested. Not because of something bad you went did, because of the love of God. Today as I stick... Why did he separate those two things right there? You are really following him. I'm having a hard time. A voice that your heart I'm glad. Would be Somebody's got to be. Your heart would be arrested. Not because of something bad you went did, because of the love of God. Well, the love of God only makes the, the right sense when you understand the bad things that you've done. Right. So again, he's trying to say, you're not that bad. God loves you. <sighs> but he also talks about sin and how there had to be this. <clears throat> he never talks about hell. No, but yet they show once. hell in yeah. this dra drama like crazy. Yeah. And if you... Today as I stand here, I stand yeah. humbled. Yeah. Because the only thing that could wash away all of my sins, mm -hmm. it was nothing but the blood of Jesus. The Bible says in Mark 10, 45, I never want you to forget this. For even the Son of Man, Jesus, did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a, watch this word, ransom for many. Let me say something you may have never heard. Jesus's death was the seed for the tree that sits in this room and watch is online right now. His life went down. We believe in him. We begin to have everlasting life. Like I said about more four kids, there's nothing I wouldn't do. Everlasting life is about what happens in eternity after we die. That is correct. He just changed it. He did. To create a way for them to be saved and safe and have a relationship with me. If I would do that as an earthly father, how much more would our loving, good, great father do? to have a relationship with you. But pastor, I messed up. It doesn't matter. He's the only one that can take a mess and turn it into a message. Here we go. He's going to start with his little it, things. But, but, but pastor, I messed up. It doesn't matter. He can take a mess and turn it into a message. Mm -hmm. In other words, you can be redeemed. You can you can get better. Yeah. And, and, you, and your life will be an example to others right. when, when people see how much you've changed. Right. When somebody says, pastor, I've messed up, a pastor who knows what he's talking about would say, you did. You're guilty. Right. And then would explain forgiveness. Right. That Christ won on the cross for his right. sin. A, a pastor, unless the guy was saying, I messed up when he didn't really do anything wrong, then he would correct him and say, no, no, you didn't mess up. That's a misunderstanding. But he's, he's talking to people who might actually have real guilt. Yeah. Who are confused and they've lived a life that's been really bad. Yeah. And he's just confusing them. This really bothers me. Well, God, my relationships are in pieces. He's the only one that can gather pieces and turn it into a masterpiece. Oh, these stupid catchphrases. Mm -hmm. You know what? When you become a Christian, for real, you don't necessarily have all your relationships fixed. No. In, in some cases, you're going to lose relationships. Right. Just, that's what Jesus taught. Right. He said there would be people fighting against each other based on whether or not they follow Christ or not. Right. So he's making it sound like you get this relationship and then all the other things in your life are going to get better. I mean, we used to think that. Yeah. Today is your day of salvation. Salvation from for what? Jesus has made a way. For what? For you to be in right relationship with him. I don't care. I can't believe how many times he says relationship. I mean, where, where is that word in the Bible all over the place? It isn't. It isn't. For who you are, you are worth and worthy of receiving the gift that Jesus has given to all of us. Explain why that's wrong. 
You're, you're, you're. Oh man, you're working it here. Well, th this y your um, mind is going like this. this. This whole week, you know, I've been making these little clips to yes. add into the movie with Brandon. Yeah. The American Gospel movie is going to be so good. This third one, it's not actually a movie; it's a docu series. Docu -series. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, it's just taking a long time because Brandon's doing a great job getting other people to add their parts, and he has to wait for them to give their permission when he adds their parts. That oh, they explain the all their parts. Opposing viewpoints. There you go. Right. So we've been working on this very issue about how some of the pastors that we're critical of are doing this very thing. They're saying, you're worthy of salvation. Mm -hmm. If you're worthy of salvation, it doesn't make any sense. The only thing that that does is it makes us say, hey, we're not that bad. Mm -hmm. I deserve to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. Jesus did something for me because of how great I am. It's so confusing. No, what what that does is it points back to ourselves mm -hmm. and it turns people into little narcissists and little egomaniacs. And yeah. that's why we have people like Todd White yeah. getting famous and guys like this. Right. Who is now more popular than Todd White. He's, right. he's the new guy for right. the minute, for the moment. For the minute. <laughs> yeah. So I hope this is not overkill, but I really want to make this clear that in order for you to have a Christ-centered understanding of the gospel, it has to be focused on Christ. Right. And so you you direct all your attention on, wow, I'm I'm guilty before God. And it's not just so that you beat yourself up for the rest of your life, because that's that's kind of the, the cliche, oh, you just want to make people feel bad. Well, honestly, that's not exactly right, but there is a place for that. Yes. When somebody doesn't understand what God did and why the cross matters or anything, and they're living in rebellion against God, they do need to feel bad. <laughs> they do need to understand how guilty they are before God. And then when they understand that, it's only then that they go, wow, in spite of my guilt before a holy God, mm -hmm. he came and died in my place. He mm -hmm. took my the punishment I deserved. He took it on himself. This isn't that hard. Mm -hmm. I'm not a theologian. I'm just a guy in my basement with my wife making videos. And I do a lot of study and stuff. So I guess I'm, I am a theologian as an amateur. Right. But I'm not a professional is what I'm trying to say. Any good pastor should be able to explain this better. This guy has one of the biggest, most uh, fast-growing, influential mm -hmm. churches in America. And he's not explaining what I'm explaining. And he even says, I, I don't know how to be a pastor. He doesn't have any training. He's kind of proud of that. Like, mm -hmm. wow, it's a work of God. No, it's a work of publicity stunts. What are you going to read? Well, this is the passage that he alluded to. He read a, or he quoted about a verse, I think. Um in fact, I'm going to read this. This is Mark. I want to. I want to hear some scripture. Yeah, he was please. in chapter ten. I'm going to read starting at verse 32. And they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. And they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. And taking the twelve again, he began to tell them what was to happen to him. Uh, what was what was right before that? Let me look at the teaching about divorce. Let the children come to me. Oh, the rich young man. Rich young man. That's what had just happened. Uh, we left everything to follow you, Jesus. And Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or fathers or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. That's the verse that Kenneth Copeland says. See, you're going to get... Land. You're going to get know. all this a hundred, hundred times more. Which, yeah. This is called hyperbole, boys and girls. <laughs> And then when they say persecutions, they go, well, that's because the Christians who are mad at all the money you're making. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's what just happened. And then uh, Jesus saying, see, we will see, we are going up to Jerusalem and the son of man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles and they will mock him and they will spit on him and flog him and kill him. And after three days, he will rise. This is pretty clear teaching about what's going to happen. Right. And they're like, hey, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. This is what we were working on in that video, because Chris Valentin, one of the worst false teachers ever, yeah. totally messes this up. And they said to him, Grant us, uh, what, do you want me, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus asks them. And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism 
with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. Chris Roseborough talks about this in the movie. Mm. About the left and the right was the two people that were crucified on the cross with him. Oh, wow. And Spoiler like, alert. Yeah, you Stop don't, you don't want to, you don't want to be at the left or the right hand. Right. But see, this is, this is a really huge category thing that I really love in our, in our Lutheran teaching. And it's not just Lutherans, but I think it originated with Martin Luther. There's a theology of glory, which is Michael Todd and all these other guys. You know, you, you, you become a Christian and now you're going to have all this stuff. You're going to have power. You're going to have glory. You're going to, you know, rule in life. You're going to be dominionist. And then there's the theology of the cross. You want to be a you want to be a real Christian. You're actually going to die, in a way, mm-hmm. right? Because that's what you're 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 doing, Christ-like things. Christ came and suffered and died. He didn't you know conquer. He could have, but he didn't. So and that's what you're going to see in this passage. Um, and when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, "You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles." Lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So there's the one verse that he used. <laughs> the word. The word. Pastor Mike, you just don't understand my situation and what I got going on and how many things I got built up and how many things are still tied to me. This is the thing I want you to know. When you give your heart to Jesus, he's the only one that'll help you clean up your habits as well. You don't have to come to him clean. He wants to be the one to help you be redeemed. My question is for you. So I want to just make the point here that salvation and redeemed are used in his Mm-hmm. preaching to represent a life change mm-hmm. which is true we're totally in favor of people giving up drugs and you know having a better right, life right but there's no mention of being redeemed from the punishment and the wrath of god and right redeemed from hell being saved from hell salvation is all about basically having a better life and doing better and cleaning up your act right so that's why people he's saying you know it's not about cleaning up your act but you're going to clean up your yeah. act <laughs> think about how much god loves you and what would you do for love? Oh boy. Uh, yeah. Oh, so this. Yeah. We're done now, right? No. An eerie fear gripped the heart of the princess as she approached the ominous gates of the city. Here we go. We're in hell country. now. Hell trap. she dared not turn back. Hello? Is anyone there? Ice players tuning up. Song is coming. Can anyone help me? This is all my fault. There's the Well Satan kind well, of character. Well It looks like it is your fault. And now all the people of your kingdom are suffering because of you. It's a pity that the dragon was This actress is enjoying her role. Too oh much. yeah, too yeah. much. She's right. really Back at Havania, riots had ensued outside the castle walls. People were indulging in all kinds of terrible behavior, and it seemed that they all had turned greedy and selfish. Some were angry with the king for building the wall, and others just frustrated at the insufficient fruit of their hard labor. This is, this is so dumb. Don't worry. You can stay here with me. <laughs> but only... Under my head's getting one wet heavy condition. This is only halfway through. You oh. work for me. <laughs> and I suppose I'll help you get back to your precious little palace. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> Whoopsies. <laughs> oh, yeah, there she goes with the cross. Now. This is too good. Yeah. Of the people in my dungeon. Song. Oh, great king. You don't seem so great after all. There she is. She's on the cross. Yeah. yeah, this is the part that really got people upset, which I totally agree with being upset over. It doesn't make any sense. No. It's sacrilegious. Yes, it's it is. It's creepy. It is. 
And it's going so over the line. They show with so everything. much of hell. And they don't have time to read scripture. So, the, so that's what. And this is Easter. So she's on the cross. Yes. And she's supposed to represent all of mankind. Right. Stop the track. Let me state the facts. I told you, give me a minute and I'll be right back. Got the princess. They say I couldn't. I got. I, I can't free her. Tell me something. Where yo boss at? We in Heldra and down here, we like to talk back. I'm your new leader. I'd like to keep you. What you said. I'm the deceiver. <laughs> yeah. Taking all the, yeah. Oh, that was too. Fast. Since we left out the kingdom, been plotting this every day. How long was the question until we made the king pay? I'm the dragon. Best believe me. You'll see how I'll take the. You ain't you calling call him to save, save you. Is you bad no, no, no. Stick, up, a stick, stick up, up, stick up. I need the crown and that money. Gonna stick, stick up, up, stick up. up. Uh, you see mask. the mask? Where'd that money? Done. Fallen angels. You see me? You know, I, I do, do the same. same. Let me Take explain. His. Shut up. Let me explain. Oh, this is so useful. This is really helping people understand the gospel message. But they could read their Bible at home in their own time. Yeah, if they really want to know what... Yeah, you could do that at home. We don't have time. I this mean, is a church. It's like they're glorifying this. Yes, they that's exactly right. They are glorifying this. They're having way too much fun being yeah. evil. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is the stupidest part. Yeah. Everybody was playing this clip. You know that video I made them uh. where I had the worst church services with all the stupid things? Yes. Thank you, Michael Todd. <laughs> this is going to be the start of the I next I will be one. enjoying every moment I get to add these clips next year. I have no idea what this was supposed to mean. I don't think anybody else does. I don't know. It's just and then going. and then they show these ones that are yeah, really evil like, and they like laugh a, at each yeah, other there's a little and they try skit. to be yeah silly and here's the son <sighs> who's not God. He's the son. Right. Oh, another song. Oh yeah. <sighs> This is kill the, yeah, kill the dragon, save the girl. This is uh, supposed to be, I don't know who she represents. I don't know either. Kind of creepy. She looks like a pagan goddess. Yeah, she does with the crown. I mean, I'm, I'm sure Statue that wasn't Statue of Liberty. <laughs> that wasn't their intentions. Kill the dragon, save the girl. I don't know exactly what that means, but it's supposed to represent something about, and this is word of faith teaching, kill Satan yeah. and ransom mankind. Yeah. This is word of faith doctrine. This is not Christian doctrine. So now how come the girl's not on the cross again? I don't know. Why was she there to begin with? I have no idea. It's because it was in the script. That's right. I tell you what, they spent a lot of money on uh, lights. And, and all kinds of things. The fog smoke, machine. Yeah. I mean, the production is really incredible. But... That's not what church is supposed to be. That's what a theater does. Church should be different than a theater. I like theaters at times. I'm not opposed to theater, but leave that for the people who are doing theater. Now all of a sudden they're in the woods. We have no <laughs> idea why. Because they get to do another little routine. Yeah. We get to see the Satan girl again. Oh, that's right. Doesn't she somehow... Blah. Watch. It's very unclear what happens next. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. So the Jesus figure isn't very good at sword fighting. Yeah. You can't even beat a girl. And it looks like she just sliced him. Yeah, that's what it kind of looks like, but... But then watch. But then... What, what was that? What was that? I don't know. I still don't know. Is hang on, hang on, I... hang on. So now he's supposed to be there. Oh, now she's, oh, now she's there. On the cross. And he's... now he's taking her down. I don't know why she was there. I don't know either. I don't understand what's happening. Me neither. I don't understand who these people are. I don't either. <laughs> I just want to go to sleep. Kill the there dragon. There we go. Here now she she's comes back. Again. I, I don't understand this either. I don't understand it either. What happened in the woods? 
See? Now he stabs. Now she stabs him. But he doesn't die on the cross. But he he took her off the cross. Yeah. But I think he's going to go on the cross Seemed now, isn't he? Most. No. The no? princess should have been rejoicing what? at her newfound freedom, but instead she grieved over the loss of her savior as she... I want to make a whole video just making uh, fun of this lady's voice, but uh, I won't. I won't do it. I don't have any time. ...made her way back to Havania to relay the dreadful news that the great king's only son had died at the hands of the evil dragon. How you doing? I forgot we had two dogs here with us. Yeah. <laughs> what love is this that you gave your life for me? See, they don't have him. He got sliced with this. But he's got to come back to life, though. Yeah, I don't know how that goes. And made a way for me to know you. And I confess. Yeah, that is so messed up because. Well, I'll just let it play. It doesn't matter. <laughs> He did the thing, he gets her back, and then he gets killed. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Did they not check this beforehand? Did anybody Remember it this? said that they got this from scripture. Oh, and then they've got this. <laughs> oh, and then they played the, yeah, this, oh, this, is this Bloody from, this? scene. No, it's from some other movie. Yeah. I, and I just go fast. I mean. <sighs> this is just. Just uh, Gore. working on people's emotions. Yes. So, I mean, they're implying that Jesus is somehow right. part of the story, obviously. They, they are. But I don't know why he was being whipped and killed. Oh, but here we are with the... Hey, look, it's we're back in hell, boys and girls. <laughs> we're back in hell. <laughs> that is a lot of fog. Oh, this is the stupidest part. Yeah. You thought that last part was stupid? Oh, yeah, you no, you're right. Nothing there now. he is. He is in the... He is on the cross now. now there's a new person on the cross. Remember, God gave this play to Michael Todd. So don't blame Michael Todd, blame God. This goes on and on. Yeah, it does. That, we've taken down our biggest opponent. What are our proposals to take over the rest of Avinia? Lust? Pride? Care to present? What it is? Oh, that's yeah, right. uh, actually, jealousy here. I have the perfect plan to. Boy, bye, lady. We okay. Got this situation in the bag. Man, dude, I yes. already know. Uh, you what? can actually take a seat. Yeah, several. Good boy. As we were saying, dragon, this is what you need to do. Step one, find you a bad Okay. Is. okay. For step, step two, she gotta have a fatty. Hey. <laughs> It's all about their booty. So I that's think that's something. I'm pretty sure that most of the people who were writing or, or making videos against this showed this part and some of the other stupid things we, we showed. And they're they're terrible. They're stupid. They're blasphemous. Yeah. They're just. Oh, I. It, it's so poor idiotic. Taste. Poor taste would be a nice way to say exactly. it. Exactly. This is poor taste on steroids. <sighs> and we're talking about the kind of steroids that Todd White's probably been doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey. Hey. He's looking about that red and purple, too. <laughs> I, I don't know if we should... I don't think we should play this. Because every, everyone's, every, no. yeah, everyone's seen and, this. And it, we're just bringing more attention to this. Yeah. And it's just... Uh, it goes on and on. A, a long time. Um, and it doesn't make any sense. No. It's just a bunch of making fun of things and And, being, and, and it's not funny. It's not clever. It's, and it's it goes on way too long. Look at this. Yeah, but they didn't have time to read scripture. No. You can do that at home. They didn't read scripture because, you know, that's God's word. He's not dead, he's risen. This incredible choir sings. So if they would have just told the actual story from the Bible, yeah. then they could have this beautiful song about yeah. actually the story of Jesus. Right. Rising from the dead after he died on the cross to pay for our sins. See, yes. I just explained it. It wasn't that hard. Right. Didn't they take two hours. <laughs> Actually, this thing is about an hour and a half. <sighs> no, 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 it's not. It's it's just over an hour. <laughs> it feels like four hours. It does. Yeah, it's amazing how bad this is. 
Um, he is risen. Okay, He's not dead. Okay, it goes okay, on and okay, on and okay. on and, and on. There's the father. And then the father's like, hey, hey, you're back. It's not so bad Woo! anymore. And Don't cry. Oh, and the woman's and back. Everybody's clapping and everybody's and cheering. happy. And here we go. Away. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> All done. Um, <laughs> All done. <laughs> yeah. Oh, then he comes back. Oh. Uh, it took me from being a liar, yeah. a again? manipulator, somebody. Okay, he's talking about himself again. Yeah. I mean, this has all been about him when he talks. Not all. I'm sorry. That's that's over. But he's talking about how he he's changed. He's different. Yes. So it's all about redemption from your previous that's life. That's right. So I have to. That's your personal order. Say, I feel the presence of God right now. I don't. All hell has been trying to break loose. All hell was on stage all night. You. It's against your life. And today is your day of salvation. Watching at home, in this room right now, and on the count of three, oh, that's the I just phone. want you to slip your hand up because this is the greatest one decision you can ever make. Slip your hand up. It took me from being a liar, a manipulator, somebody who was addicted to pornography. You know, this is what Todd White says about himself. He was right. a liar and a manipulator yeah. who was also addicted to all Porn sorts of stuff. Yeah, pornography hmm. was. I wonder what kind of character traits we're seeing here Pornography. in these megalomaniac narcissist pastors. <laughs> had a lot of bad stuff in my heart. It took me from being that person, not to a perfect man, but a progressing man. And I got back in right relationship with the Father. And today, no matter how broken, how lost, it's not how bad. hurting, it's not how judged you feel. The mouth and his, your yeah. father is saying, come home. He's not going to <laughs> hurt you. He I wants like to help you. That Asian movie. And there's another group of people in here who have been far from God. You used to walk with him. You used to talk with him. And you thought today you was just going to check the box. I went to the service. My fit was fly. And God said, no, you going to have an encounter with your destiny today. You're going to have an encounter with your destiny today. What does that even mean? Why can't you just talk with real <laughs> words, real Bible words? Like know. if you're far from God, it's time for you to repent. Right. It's time to come back to church. Why don't you just talk like a normal pastor at a normal church? Because he's not. He's got to be different. And he's not a pastor. He's not a real pastor, no. and that's for sure. Okay, we're done. I, I can't take oh, this. Oh, we got to have these guys howl. Oh, that's right. We haven't had them howl for we a long time. Howl. It, hey guys, wake like, up! You know what? I'm gonna move the mic. Wake I'm gonna, up! I'm gonna turn the mics down just a little Hi, bit. Hey guys! <laughs> you, wanna, you wanna cry? We gotta play this so yeah. you can cry. All the Bible says, I'm quoting the Romans 19, is if you believe Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and you repent. And that's not some deep this is a poor representation of the oh, gospel turn. message. It was not! Is this guy an egomaniac? What do you think of, what do you think of the play Ransom? Everybody, thanks so much. He's this done was with a the long cucumbers. one. Thanks for sticking with us. We appreciate it, and thank you for uh... Michael Todd. I look forward to your text. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for um, showing up and staying with us. We appreciate yes. your support and your prayers. We appreciate. Yeah, it's been a while. I have a lot of yeah. new new videos in the works. A lot of new things in the works, and we really, really appreciate your prayers and your yeah, support. Thank you. And so much. Um, before we get any more long winded, I do all the normal stuff I do. I'm just going to yeah. end it here. All right. Because we got the howling. Yeah. You can't really top that. Can't top it. God bless you, everybody. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, Basta. lifting. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, it's the time of hard work. Oh, shut up.